Museum is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense amount of items all held within this one space where nearly every item can see you and you can see it all at once. A room full of dark mysteries and even darker secrets. A collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep what is held within it from escaping. 9pm has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum. This is when all of the cursed items come to life, and to their full power. A museum in which the tables are turned. Visitors do not only look and study each item on display, but the items watch, study, and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong move, one disrespectful action could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. We will have the chance to continue seeking answers from the same items Ed and Lorraine once did. And yes, that includes Annabelle. You're going to be the first ones investigating this museum. Well, nothing bad happened. Something actually amazing happened. Well, I mean, we just opened 98 Divic boxes, so I'm sure anything that happens, you're gonna be happy with. Did something happen with the Divic box? Maybe, but something good happened. Well, okay, okay Something good well, happened. Are you still packed? Yes. So that means you're already ready to go to the airport tomorrow. What time do we have to leave? Uh, the flight leaves at 11 a.m. So we gotta get up at like 6 a.m. And, and I already booked the, the, the tickets, so. We just came that's, home. That's, oh, we just came back. <laughs> From 20 different places. Yes. And now we're going to one more. One more. Are you ready? Look, dude, we just handled 20 straight nights together in the motorhome, every haunted location in the Midwest. You might have cried at one point. I might have cried at one point. You thought I was going to die. I thought you were going to die. I thought I was going to kill you. We all thought we were going to kill each other. It was a lot of scary moments. It was really cool. We opened a lot of different boxes. You know, all these fun things happened, but now we need to go to one more spot. I, okay, can you tell me what the spot is? No. What are you doing here? Yep. Second, why are you here alone? Third question, why do I have a camera? That's, that's probably the most important <laughs> part. What are you doing tomorrow? Do parkour, mainly. Cool, can you be on a flight tomorrow, please? This is gonna be the most dangerous handshake in the two world. Two days, two days. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Something cool to show everyone when you're athletic. Uh, part-time ghost hunter, part-time professional athlete. Wow. Cool, see you in the morning. Uh, okay, uh, do I need anything? Fuck. <laughs> what you doing? We just got back. Are you on my front doorstep with a camera? Why do you have so much mail at your front door? Because I'm lazy and we just got back. <laughs> you have a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Can you be at LAX at 11 a.m.? Please. <laughs> it's something cool, I promise. I'm not going anywhere far. New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pack the camera gear. You just bring but, your clothes. Should I be afraid? Probably. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Yep. Uh, Where are you? I'm actually in a bus right now to go back to LA and uh, headed to like Newark, New Jersey. Wait, where are you right now then? I'm in New York City. Can you stay in New York for two more days? Why? We're all, we're all gonna be there tomorrow. In New York tomorrow? Yes, everyone. Corey, Corbin, oh, Evan all said yes. Can you stay there? Pay for your flight. Don't worry about your flight home. I'll cover it. Hey man, hey. whatever it is, huh? No, absolutely fucking not. You don't know how to behave. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> That's it. I dragged us all here. I know we just literally got home uh, why from are we here? three weeks on a trip, yeah. and all I said was, "Get to the airport." We're flying to JFK. Mm -hmm. Then flight. from there, we got in the rental car, and then I drove us around two hours, two and a half hours to here. Yes. Without telling us anything. No, because <laughs> tonight is something special. Yeah, something it has I've... to be crazy. Now, did any of you happen to see what town we're in right now? I'd never look. No. 
So, we're in Connecticut. Okay. okay. We're I at, thought we were still in New yeah. York. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I swear. I, I thought we were still in New York. I know, I know. Okay, we're in Connecticut. And Jonah knew we were in Connecticut because Jonah's from Connecticut as well, which is really oh, bizarre yeah. Interesting. that we live not too far away like from each other. 20 minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Neighbors. this is Shelton. This is where I grew up. Oh. This is where Blake Shelton grew up. Mm -hmm. No, this is where Elton grew up. This is where you grew up. I haven't been back to this town for almost 13 years to the day. Oh, whoa. I know what we're doing now. We're gonna investigate your old house. Strangely, growing up, I lived in a house mm -hmm. that was within a cemetery, mm -hmm. and I found out later that the house I grew up in was the old funeral home and possibly crematorium. And we're actually about a quarter mile away from No way. Wait, so you don't know the story, like the trampoline story? No. A lot of weird things happened to me, shit that you guys don't even know about. Stuff I've never told. That's the only story I've ever oh. told you. Oh, I didn't know that there was more. Why do you think I have absolutely no fear of like demonic <laughs> anything? Wait, why would you never tell us this? Was there a demon That's exactly in your house? house? Mm. Wait. Drive through the cemetery and I will show you the house I live in. Yeah, the fact yeah. that I just like was like, get on an airplane, this has to happen tonight. Yeah. No excuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not like the house has been sitting there for years and years and years. And like, I could have done this any other time with all the other times that we've been in the area. But tonight is like particularly the night that we have to be here. Super urgent, last minute, paid really expensive flights yeah. to be here tonight. Weren't we close? You know what I mean? So <laughs> like let's, let's go, ago. let's go see my house. Wait, did you summon a demon in your house on this day? Let's hop in the car. The Dybbuk box the is from the last places. Yeah, it's not like I like left 13 years ago, like to this day, or you know what I mean? It got 13 Dybbuk boxes to open before we... Whoa, didn't realize that. Think about that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And the last trip was 13 nights of investigations. Numbers. Did you summon a demon in your house growing up? What's well, 8 plus 8. Haunted. <laughs> Oh, 16. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sorry. Yeah. I was counting. Why do you guys think Don't count too hard. I don't know. I never know anything. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Can you guys even get in with those rigs on? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Film the license plate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, it's a Florida license plate. That is. Kind of weird. That is weird. Where, it's, where, you're, tra where you're from. Yeah. I also lived in Florida. Yeah. Ooh, things are lighting up. Did you summon Ooh. did you summon a demon Ooh. in your house 13 years ago Ooh. today? Is that why we're here? Ooh. Do you think if I summoned a, a demon in my house 13 years ago today, you don't think I'd be doing it in every video we've been in? I would have learned how to do this years ago. I'd be an expert. I just have them on call. I have so, them like speed dial. Hey, sure. Come on. Get the car. That's the cemetery. That is indeed. Oh, that is the cemetery. Every day in my bedroom window had a perfect view of people getting buried. Oh my, bro, this is where you lived? Yeah, wait, we all, you'll know the house when you see it. So this is why you're into ghost stuff. I don't know. You definitely grew up in a haunted house. Is that it? Wait, is that it? That's it. Whoa, that looks like a conjuring house. <laughs> bro, this, that looks like a house we would investigate. Yeah, well. <laughs> we couldn't find records for it, but the crematorium was in the basement. What? And that red hatch door where the crematorium oven, I guess, would have been is where I spent like all of my time. Well, we'll drive around and go say hello. Were well, you just gonna pull right up? Well, they don't know we're coming. Wait, what? And I don't think anyone's here. So we flew five hours for the owners to not know that we're here so that you could just knock on a door? Well, let's find out. I figured while we're in the area, I might as well come here, right? So this isn't the surprise? No. Wait! So then Wait. What's, the, what's the surprise? What's the surprise? Wait, actually... What's the surprise? I don't know. I can only see his legs. I know, nobody can see him. Okay, Evan, do you know what's going on? I have no idea. I literally thought we are going to film at his house. Oh, he's knocking! He knocked! Oh my god, he's going to the basement. Could you imagine getting married to him and like he gets down on a knee and he's like, what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> you tell me. You, yeah, you can tell me what I'm doing, Ginger. Know. Get in the car. Yeah, get in the car. Get in the car. Hello. Get, we're going on a six hour flight. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, what's the plan? Well, I'm going to leave a note and then maybe they'll call us. You know, I mean, you're here now. Let's just enjoy it. Let's just relax. Enjoy the creepy house that I grew up in. And let's okay. have some fun tonight. What do you mean, enjoy the creepy okay. house? We don't even know if they're going to let us in. Okay. We don't know. But, you know, if you want, we can just go into the cemetery tonight and just stand outside their window holding candles and just wait till they let us in. I'll just stay in the That'll Dodge probably work, right? Dude, it was literally like a six hour flight. <laughs> we drove a couple hours. Dude. We're in Connecticut. I thought we were in New York. <laughs> and he won't tell us exactly what we're doing. The house is still haunted, which I'm assuming it is. Imagine when the owners come home and they see this note on their door. I used to live here from 2004 to 2009. <laughs> The rumor has it there's a demon in the basement where I used to play drums. Please let me come into your house tonight at 3 a.m. I will give you $400. <laughs>
Not just him, five guys. Yeah, at least like put your LinkedIn or something on there. Yeah, exactly. Probably tape it to the outside of their mailbox. You're not allowed to put things in people's mailboxes. So which one of y'all know what we're doing? I have no fucking clue what we're doing. I, I literally have no idea. Do we believe Evan? Comment down below if we believe Evan. Just because of the handwriting. Hope it doesn't rain. Wait, so you're not gonna <laughs> tell us. No, no, no. Wait, you're still not gonna tell us. I'll tell you as we drive there. I've wanted to come here for forever, and I've been trying to come here for four years. The most famous paranormal investigators to have ever lived, basically. The Warrens. Yeah. So are we about to go see the Annabelle doll? <gasps> is that what this video is? We're gonna go see the Annabelle doll? Not just Annabelle. What else? The entire museum. <gasps> Dude! Dude, wait, 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 wait. I thought that wasn't even- No. I thought it wasn't even possible. Way. My last message with the, the guys that own it and run it was in 2019. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, I got a message saying, hey, do you still want to film here? We're investigating the Warren Museum. Holy yeah. cow. Oh my, okay, so they it, was, have made, it was worth the flight. They have made movies on so many items that are in this museum. It's a, it's a lot more. What are we doing? What are we doing? I'll let them tell you. Uh, you're not supposed to be in there after 9 p.m. We will be there after 9 p.m. Why aren't you supposed to be there after 9 p.m.? This is gonna be crazy. Like, what if you're not supposed to be there during those hours because that's when the items in there can attach to people? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, more likely. Yeah. That they that's do what, That's what's people. going on. Sure. They and, hear everything you're saying and we're doing it anyway. And people have died because of some of these items. Mm-hmm. He is not wrong. Holy shit, Holy bro. Holy shit, dude. This is intense. This is, this is really intense. I actually can't believe this is happening. Ed and Lorraine Warren are among the most well-known, if not the most well-known, paranormal investigators in the world. Having managed thousands of cases and considered to be prominent figures in demonology, they are pioneers of the paranormal community who paved the way for all future investigators and conversations to be had about what the spirit world is truly capable of. For more than 50 years, they sought to help those plagued by demons and spirits alike. It is believed that they have investigated over 10,000 different cases of paranormal activity. Although they have both passed away, Ed in 2006 and Lorraine in 2019, their stories, legacy, and collection of haunted artifacts still live on in infamy. Some of their most famous cases of the direct inspiration of the Conjuring Universe film franchise, which now has become the highest grossing horror franchise in history, with more than two billion dollars at the box office alone. Annabelle, The Conjuring, Amityville Horror, Enfield Poltergeist, Devil Made Me Do It, all of which have been based off of their true cases and documentation, with most of these artifacts being preserved within the Warren Museum. The location we are not only visiting, but conducting an eight hour paranormal investigation of tonight. And yes, that means all throughout 3 a.m. Yet before we enter any location, we always seek to learn as much as we can about it. So we may have the best understanding of what we are facing. The history and importance of the Warren Museum, not only to our investigation, but the impact it had across the world cannot be understated, truly. If not for Ed and Lorraine, I do not believe this YouTube channel would exist, as they helped allow the love of paranormal to become normal. Ed and Lorraine's story begins when they first met in their youth. Lorraine was 16 when she met Ed at the Colonial Theater in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Ed was an usher at that time, and with Lorraine being a regular visitor at the theater, they would often see each other. It was through these visits that they eventually began dating. Yet their relationship was cut short when Ed was enlisted into the Navy to fight in World War II. He was deployed only four months as his ship was sunk and he was sent home on a 30-day survivor's lease. In 1945, during his 30-day leave, Ed and Lorraine decided to get married, the beginning of an eternal legacy. On July 6, 1950, their daughter Judy was born and in 1951 marked the conclusion of Ed's service in the Navy, allowing him to return home full time. Upon returning to Connecticut, Ed intended to be a professional painter. However, his other secret obsession was with ghosts and the afterlife. It's no secret that he grew up in a haunted house himself. Eventually, he found a way to meld his two worlds together, creating paintings of any home that was rumored to be haunted. Upon completion, he would then knock on the door of the home, 
and offer the painting to the owners, and in exchange, would be allowed into the home with the rain to conduct an investigation into the supernatural to see if the home truly was haunted. And by 1952, the paranormal became their main focus. After seeing how their lives aligned with the supernatural, they began to work together as a couple, investigating reported hauntings and various cases of demonic possession, both of which were devouting their lives and minds to becoming the most well-versed, skilled, and knowledgeable experts in the field. Yet these investigations and success that came from them were not simply achieved due to creating a painting and asking to walk around a haunted home. Both as devout Catholics, Ed specialized in demonology, and Lorraine possessed supernatural abilities herself as a psychic, medium, and clairvoyant. Their combination of research, paranormal investigations, science, and religion allowed them to hold a well-rounded and unique understanding of the world that lives beyond death. Becoming so renowned for his abilities to exorcise demons and evil spirits, religious authorities would call on him and Lorraine to assist in their worst cases. The phrase often tied to the Warren philosophy and based on their research in demonology is, The fairy tale is true. The devil exists. God exists. And for us, as people, our very destiny hinges upon which one we elect to follow. Lorraine's psychic gifts began development at the age of nine, beginning one day during her time at a private Catholic school. She would begin seeing light around people, and noticed that one nun in particular was glowing more brightly than the Mother Superior. It was from this time that she realized that the lights she was seeing were people's auras. Lorraine continued to develop her skills to become proficient as a trance medium as well as a clairvoyant. With these gifts, she was able to assist Ed in a way like no one else in the world could, creating a team willing to take on the most severe and terrifying cases brought to them. Those in need from all over the world would reach out in hopes to have their expertise to help combat the darkness that was consuming them. As their cases and evidence compounded, their need to be thoroughly organized grew. This led to the development and creation of the New England Society for Psychic Research, founded in 1952, became the first ghost hunting group in New England and spawned a path for future groups. The goal was to combine religion with science to study the paranormal. The Warrens' investigations work began to shift more towards the expelling of spirits, demons, and conducting exorcisms. At a time when stories of the paranormal were whispered at the loudest, Ed and Lorraine opened up the conversation about the devil, God, and the afterlife. They brought conversations about darkness to the public light. With over 10,000 cases they worked on with military, law enforcement, the church, reporters, and researchers, there was no shortage of information they were willing to present. Now, the true artifacts of their decades of research are held within their home, the Nesper headquarters, and the infamous Warren Museum. Each item with its own history, from some of the most remarkable and terrifying cases. We will have the chance to continue seeking answers and evidence from the same items Ed and Lorraine once did. And yes, that includes Annabelle. That's it. Museum closed. Please That's take it. notice. Violators prosecuted. Wow. No trespassing. Bro, this is it. This is nuts. Um, how many people must show up here that they have to kick out? I remember watching one of the videos where Ed said that no one had ever broken in, but many of people had broken out. I can't believe we're here, bro. This is crazy. This is legendary. Everyone's here. <laughs> I think they're gonna come out in a minute to meet us. So we have our normal cameras. Yeah. Yes. We have our infrared GoPro cameras. We yeah. have our night vision cameras. But additionally, we have something else that we're filming with tonight because we're going to be the very first ones to do a paranormal investigation here. Besides them, who own the place, at 3 a.m. What? What? At the devil's hour. Yes. We're gonna be in the most unholy place. And we're the first people besides them. <laughs> yes, I asked for a special permission. I was like, is there any possible way? How did you hear? get that? What is that thing? Oh, that's sick. Wait a second. This oh, is a, that is this sick. This is an early 1980s VHS camera. <laughs> That's a fossil. <laughs> and we have actual <gasps> Whoa, wait, tape wait, 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 audio wait, wait, wait. recorders. 
Bro, no so way. the original EVP. Can so I see this? This is the way. What the heck? This is the way the Warrens would have done it. They didn't have tools, so they just had their mind themselves. I am so and down. Look at this. And uh, we have hey. Tony. Hey! hey. Oh, man. How you yeah. doing? This is Tony Sparrow, son-in-law of the Warrens, married to their daughter, Judy. This couple met in 1979 when Judy accidentally waved to him, thinking he was someone else, became love at first sight, and the rest is history. Tony is now director of Nesper, as well as the owner and manager of the Warren Occult Museum. Since the 1980s, Tony had worked closely with the Warrens and continues their work to this day. Originally a police officer, he is now known for his work in the paranormal field while also consulting for numerous films such as The Conjuring series. He took up the gauntlet after the passing of the Warrens and helps pave the way for the paranormal community through his lectures and presentations at colleges and on YouTube as well. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Corbin. Corbin. You yeah. Elton. 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 Thank you for having us. Corey. 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 And who are these guys? Evan. 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 Jonah, Jonah, hey, please meet you guys. This is Eric, one of my yeah, team members. Yeah. Chris so Gorn, nice Hi guys. to see you. Hey. Hey, came ready tonight. You this can see how excited we are. We'll be able to track down one of these. Yeah. Whoa, you got the old yeah. school. <laughs> oh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Ed, Ed Warren used to have one. We almost hit an RCA like this. Really? This is what he got uh, an image of the white lady on. What? The Union Graveyard with this. Yeah. Really? He used this. And you know, there was no night vision or anything back then. No. Yeah. Just this these are very low quality compared to today. Of course. Yeah. But he was able to capture some good stuff just using this old school. You like the old school, yeah. you like the old school, so do I. This is Ed's uh, go to. Ed had open reel tape decks. He'd cart that thing around with a big <laughs> microphone, set it all up in the person's house and was interviewing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he'd go to a place and he would ask questions like at a grave site, try to get an EVP on his tape, and he would sometimes get it. Wow. Those things worked. Yeah. And then he would he went to the cassette. When he interviewed somebody, he always brought a cassette. If you watch the Conjuring 1 movie, mm -hmm. you'll say it's November 1st, 1971, yep. all at the this. parent house, and you hear him hit the cassette. Yeah, I have some, like, some of them in the museum. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. awesome. They used Lorraine's psychic ability as the equipment. That's why it's tough to match them as a team, because Ed was a seasoned investigator but also a demonologist in other words he read everything he could on demonology everything the reason why he did it he lived in a haunted house in Bridgeport Connecticut one time he was sleeping with his twin sister they had separate beds but they were in one room and his grandfather had recently died he says to me we're sleeping all of a sudden we're awakened by a sound of a cane hitting the stairs coming up to the second floor and footsteps and a cane. He was my grandfather always carried a cane. And he said the cane and the footsteps got up to the bedroom and they were circling their beds. Oh my God. And he said, I said, what do you do? And he said, I had covers all over me. Yeah. Had, my sister and I were so frightened. We had the covers over us. We could hear the cane oh. tapping all around the bed. Yeah. The museum that you guys are gonna have special privileges <laughs> to go into. Wow. You know, because you guys are our friends, kind of. <laughs> we met you today, and you seem friendly. So, <laughs> people used to start saying, Ed, I got this haunted object. Ever since I bought this object at a tag sale, I had this, the next day I saw a shadow figure, or whatever it was. Or I used this Ouija board, and now I got a problem. Yep. Or there's a statue I bought, and it's, somebody must have cursed it. And it, can you take it off my hands, Mr. Warren? And you did. You know what, Lorraine? Let's clear out the art studio and we're going to make it an occult museum. I mean, people are always ask him, why do you keep those objects? He said, Tony, when I talk about something like the Annabelle doll and what happened, you give the whole story of it, and then people say, well, where's the doll now? And I go, oh, I threw it in a dumpster. <laughs> it's not here anymore. I burned it. Oh, no, we, we destroyed that. No evidence. He said, it's for people who want to learn more about the paranormal. This is evidence. If he wasn't on a case, he'd be studying more than you can imagine. I could bring in the museum whenever you guys are ready. And uh, on the way, I'll show you that little sign that says Barn Door Studios. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't take it down yet. Oh, is that that sign? That's nice. amazing. After you, Corey. So he made that sign? Yeah. That's, yeah, dude, this was his studio. That's amazing, dude. Oh, are you guys ready? I'm ready. I used to teach about the paranormal. If you could say that word three times fast, I'll let you in. <laughs> Say it, go ahead. Paranormalology. Paranormal. 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 Paranorm
We did it. <laughs> Let's go in. This is going to be like a once in a lifetime for you guys, right? Because you haven't been here before. Why are we uh, not? <laughs> please be respectful when you go in. Of course. Don't touch anything. And I'll explain some of the, some of the major things that are in there, okay? I'm yeah. not going to give you everything that's in there. Of course. I want you guys to close your eyes and envision yourselves, all of you each, in a covered in a white light all around your body. See, your aura is your supernatural glow around your body. Everything that God has created that's alive has an aura around it. They're all different, like a fingerprint. But that's where evil, that's where the demonic would try to enter through your aura if you have a chink in it. If you have a weak spot in your aura, that's where the devil goes for it. So how do you protect it? By envisioning yourself in a glowing white light all around your aura. Then ask God to protect you from anything evil, otherworldly, demonic, or inhuman. God will protect you with that white light. Ed used to use it. Lorraine used it. I use it. All our team guys use it. It's got us through a lot of stuff. So that's your extra armor of protection when we go into a place like this. You could do that when you go into a haunted location, cemetery, a haunted house, anywhere where evil might be prevalent, you know what I mean? Yeah. So let's go. Let's go in. Through the door, man. The Warren Occult Museum is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense amount of items all held within this one space where nearly every item can see you and you can see it all at once. Haunted pictures and paintings, animal skins and masks used for black magic, real human skulls utilized in rituals, cursed statues, dolls, toys, musical instruments, voodoo artifacts, vampire coffins, tombstones, witchcraft items, and an endless list with a deadly history. A room full of dark mysteries and even darker secrets, yet to be unlocked from the items they are contained within. A collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep keep what is held within it from escaping. Many of the items have been used for black magic or the occult in an attempt to hurt others, often having succeeded in either harming or killing. Many of the previous owners of these objects have ended up in mental institutions due to the strong effects and influence each item has. There is an immense amount of spiritual protection here to contain the evil within the objects, all of which comes from those that care for the museum. Hosting a collection unlike anywhere else in the world, all items here are considered unholy, cursed, and evil. To touch an item is to condemn oneself, to invite demons and evil spirits to attack, and consume your physical and spiritual energies. Special protection is put in place to handle any item in the museum, and only a few people are capable of doing so, all of which are with us tonight. 9 p.m. has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum, and this lockdown continues until 6 a.m. This isn't about closing the museum for the night, but this is when all of the cursed items come to life and to their full power. Even from behind the wards and protections, they become extremely dangerous. This window of time is known as the psychic hours, and a smaller window within it is known as the devil's hour, 3 a.m., when the devil is mocking the holy trinity, empowering all items and spirits of an evil being. Even when Ed and Lorraine were still present, they would not be in the museum during those hours. Entering the room alone is at the risk of each person. The young man died in an accident hours after visiting the museum where he was challenging Annabelle. A priest, as well as a detective, were nearly killed in the museum as well. A museum in which the tables are turned. Visitors do not only look and study each item on display, but the items watch, study, and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong move, one disrespectful action, could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. Wow. Come on in. Kind of cool, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, what are you saying? Kind of? This is oh, awesome. Wow. Got the shadow. Got that light coming in. What you're going to see immediately wow. when you first walk in here, create what's called a topa, a human manifestation of the mind. If you have the knowledge, if you have the power, if you are high enough essence, can create things like that, a group would get together and they would take masks like this, put them on their, on their, over the face, and then hope to be able to remove the mask and have that image still there, creating a devil or a demon for themselves. Over here though, 
We call this the shadow doll. Look at it. People say, why do you call it a shadow doll? Yeah. Well, look at it. Look at it. Look at it looks. Yeah. It's ugly. Yeah. There's nails coming out of it. There's a human tooth coming out of it. What? But there's bird hair, bird feathers, I should say, animal bone. That was created specifically for one reason and one reason only, to cause distress to other people if used in a proper manner. So if I was very knowledgeable in sorcery and wizardry, and I knew how to do it, I would take a photograph of this and print out the photo. On the back of the photo, I would write the curse Ooh. that I want. Right. Say, towards, say towards Elton. Ha! Elton, I don't like, because Elton tried to steal my girlfriend away. Something yeah. happened where I don't like Elton anymore, or, or in a business venture or something. Now I, I want to get rid of Elton. I write a curse specifically for Elton because I'm knowledgeable in incantations and curses, we'll say. I send it in the mail, the picture with the curse on the back to Elton or to you. Just by you opening the envelope and seeing the photo, you accept that the curse is written on the back unbeknownst to you. If the person is powerful enough as a sorcerer or a wizard, it's called a shadow doll because it can come to you in your dreams if it's done right. It has been known to scare people in a nightmare so badly that it can stop your heart. That's why people wear a crucifix that's blessed or a medal that's blessed. Yeah. That's the opposite. This would be the opposite of something that's holy and blessed. This would be the unblessed. Mm -hmm. Even though we have every item in here blessed by a priest that comes in here and he blesses these objects, he does the whole museum, then he goes with holy oil and does his thing. These are from Africa, utility dolls from Africa. Are they powerful? Yeah, they're powerful, and I'll tell you why. These were stolen from a witch doctor in Africa and sent to a man here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. If I can get those here and sell them on the black market, I can make myself some dough. The story is, this young 28-year-old police officer, two weeks after he got these, he became paralyzed from the neck down. Doctors couldn't even figure out what was wrong with him. He couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't move. And for about a year and a half, he was like that, and he finally passed away. Now, was it from the fertility analysis? I'd say so. You can't prove it, right? It's hard to prove some of these things. But why would you take that kind of a chance with the unknown realm? There's powers out there that we don't know about. But here, we have just a regular, like a household mirror, right? But we call it a conjuring mirror. Why? Because people have tried to conjure spirits through mirrors for many, many different years. People call it scrying, I call it crystal omancy. Mm. In other words, if there's a shiny object, it's easy for a spirit to reflect their image on a shiny object. We had a gentleman from New Jersey, actually. He's now in a mental institution because he dr drove him crazy. What he did was he replicated what we call a psychomantium. A psychomantium is a darkened room. When I say darkened, I mean blackened. You would sit down in a chair here, so all you could basically see or barely see is the mirror. This guy, he would sit here for hours looking at the mirror and say, Grandma, Grandma, I want to see my grandmother. I miss you, or my father. Different relatives that he lost. He would sit there for two and three hours beckoning them to come to him through the mirror. What was he doing? He was trying to conjure spirits. Mm -hmm. Two weeks he did that straight, nothing happened. But then, suddenly monstrosity, faces of monstrosities started to come through to this guy. It scared the living heck out of him. It frightened him so badly, like I said, he ended up in a mental hospital, this guy. Jeez. You can do the same thing. Now, I wouldn't want you to, no. and the audience listening, I wouldn't ever want you to do that. If you do something long enough and with enough intention, it's to the spirit realm, it's gonna ha happen. Something's gonna come through. It's probably not gonna be your mom or your dad or your grandmother or your mm -hmm. grandfather mm -hmm. because the demonic can trick you. In other words, it could be someone who looks like your mom, your dad, your girl, whoever passed away, they come in the guise mm -hmm. of who you want them to be yeah. because they, the demonic, want to be invited into your life. Mm -hmm. As soon as you invite them in, even if it's unbeknownst to you, it's almost impossible to get rid of a demonic entity then, because you, you invited them into your realm. The demonic goes after the weak will. Now, if you're strong in faith and you're just stoic, you're like a John Wayne type of guy, and you believe in God, and God's going to protect me, they, a lot of times they don't mess with you. This is a, an organ from the Phelps house. They were clearing it out, and somebody called up Ed and said, Ed, would you like to have one, an artifact from that uh, Phelps mansion? He said, yeah, I'll take whatever you got. Ed said from upstairs in the kitchen, he could hear the organ playing. They'd say, nobody's supposed to be in the museum. Would they break in? He'd run down the stairs, come here, and a 
the strings of the organ would stop. Three different times here. It's not a player wow. organ. We have the remnants of Flight 401. These parts here are actual pieces of the wreckage wow. air, aircraft. Someone, I'm telling you, I had a visit from Don Rico. I came home, it was raining, pouring out. He's under the tree was a guy in the flight outfit, flight navigator outfit with a hat, he had rain gear on. And he's standing in front of the tree, staring at Ed when he pulled in the driveway. And then Ed gave a double take and the guy was gone. Mm -hmm. Now who's Don Repo? He was the flight navigator that went down with the crew and the passengers. Eastern Airlines, that's not no longer in business, they took pieces of the wreckage that they found mm -hmm. that were still good, yeah. like seats, the galley carts, the voice, flight recorders and use them on other planes. The other planes that they were used on, guess who showed up? Don Repo. Yeah. Don Repo was seen by the pilots, oh. the co-pilot, the flight attendants, and the passengers. They got so many <laughs> reports of seeing this guy sitting in full uniform in one of the passenger seats, and sometimes he'd go like this, Whoa. and then disappear. Why? They got so many reports that Eastern Airlines finally said, let's take those parts off the plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they did. Yeah. And then when they took the parts off the plane, the haunting stopped. Oh, Scott. There's things in this world you can't explain. Yeah. And anybody out there that thinks that you don't live after you die is wrong. I used to ask Lorraine a lot at lectures, why do you believe that? And she said, it's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of evidence. We get so much evidence that people live on after they pass away. Visions of people people communicating, shadow figures, a full vision of someone that you lost. An apparition, by the way, is a spirit that you can recognize. Mm -hmm. A ghost is a spirit that you don't recognize. Mm -hmm. In other words, if a ghost appeared right here and I didn't know the identity, I'd call it a ghost. But you'd say, that's my grandmother. That's an apparition that's of your apparition. grandmother. Interesting. That's the only difference in terminology. Borley Rectory. I went there with Ed and with my wife and Lorraine. My wife immediately got sick when she got on the property. She's psychic, my wife, but she doesn't like to admit it. She liked to play with it. Lorraine was fearless. She would go to a place and she developed her psychic awareness. When you hone in and tune in like that on so many investigations, your ability just gets better and better. A lot of the people in England and Scotland, they do believe in ghosts. They don't talk about it much, but they believe in it because they've experienced it. So that's why Ed and Lorraine went a lot, and I went with them about four different times. It's great. Yeah, we were there uh, last end of last year. Where'd you go? Uh, all over, oh. honestly. We did Ireland, Northern Ireland. Like, we didn't touch Scotland, and then England. We actually tried going to the Enfield house. Oh, you did? We tried, like, Main leaving. Street? Yeah, Main we, like, left a note to be like, hey, if it's possible. Oh, that would have been cool to get I know, in there. but they didn't answer. Oh, I could tell you a little bit about that. I didn't visit it, but my my wife did, and of course, Ed and Lorraine did. John told me a story. John Kenny Hurst told me, told me a story. He's sitting on the couch in the Enfield house. All of a sudden, he said, Tone, I hear this plopping noise. I said, yeah. He goes, and I look down, and in front of me is this big pile of crap. He goes, and it was, it looked just like human crap, but it was big, like horse size, but it was right there. I said, well, did it dematerialize again? He goes, no, we had to clean it up. What? It just, out of nowhere, a plop sound, and he looked down, and there it was. What? Human excrement on the ground. Lorraine was standing in the kitchen. All of a sudden, wallpaper just tore away from the wall, floated around over the one light that was there to block her light. Lorraine wanted to stand under the light. She said, when I stood under the light, I felt better in this house. The voices from Enfield, England were amazing. Oh. If you watch The Conjuring 2 at the end, you'll hear the actual oh voices. Yeah. But Ed had hours of those voices that would just converse with Ed. Now that's the, the key. The, the key is communication back and forth. John Kennyhurst was asked by Ed to go out to the car. John, the priest can't come today. Go, 10 minutes later, comes back. And Ed's like, well, where's the holy water? And John says, there is no holy water, Ed. He goes, I know where it was. It is no longer there. Mm. It's gone. I can't find it. Ed says, well, you know what? We're going to make our own holy water. Give me some salt. Give me some water. Ed did like a simple, his own blessing over it, which is not really holy water. So then Ed said, well, we're going to do a blessing on the house. He says, hand me the holy water, John. And out of the blue, a voice says, but it's not blessed. Just like that. So they could understand and see whatever Ed was doing. Wow. It's not blessed. Ed's like, what? 
but they start talking back and forth with him. They're mocking Ed. Ah, they're laughing. It's not black. That's the power of demonic entities. Wow. But those are the kind of crazy things that happen in, in, in the infield house. Jesus. What? I gotta try again to get back in there. That's, <laughs> that's, dude, that's... Wow. That's Isn't that wild. insane? Isn't that's that kind insane. Of, if I can get I the house, you want me to invite you? The things in that house, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd like to come. All right. The <laughs> things in that house that were just amazing. People would say, well, Ed and Lorraine weren't there. But well, let me just tell you this much. They weren't there for months or years. They were only there for maybe a week. But during that week, they helped out Margaret and Janet and Peggy more than uh, from the England Cyclical Institute did, according to Janet and Margaret. When Janet and Margaret saw Lorraine on the set of The Conjuring 2, they started crying, they were hugging Lorraine. And they said it right to the crew and me. They're the only ones that ever helped us. Lorraine and Ed are the only ones that ever really helped us or tried to help us. Oh, pearls, pearls of death. They were given to a lady. Wow. As soon as she put them on, she felt that she was being strangled to Just death. death. Like, like somebody took them and twisted them and were trying to kill her. So they had to snap them off her. Why? Maybe there's a curse attached to them. I don't know. But they were given to Ed for that reason. Why are you so comfortable touching everything? Just because you're around it all the time? Yeah, yeah because I'm around it. Not only that, I, these items have been blessed. And I protect myself like we did outside. Went to confession first yeah. before I met you guys today. Ed said to me when he did it, he said he could pick them up. So I assumed that I could pick them up. The things I won't touch are things like Annabelle, things like the satanic idol, the shadow doll. I won't touch those. And in fact, I'm just going to show you the Annabelle doll now, actually. Come over here, guys. I'll show you the Annabelle doll. That case doll. is so much larger than wow. I thought it was. This is a long story, but I'm going to tell it to you because if you want the real story, and, and what happened here. That's a handwritten sign by Ed. Positively do not open. He wrote that years and years ago. I think he wrote it probably in 77, 78. People ask me why the devil tarot card is here. Ed put it there, so we leave it there. It's a different case, but we put it there. This item here is probably the most dangerous item. That's why it's in a case. And I'm not going to touch it. I never touch it. Not with bare hands. Oh. People say, well, you know, didn't you bring it to Las Vegas? I did bring it to Las Vegas, but I know how to protect myself, and I'll tell you how I know. Ed showed me, he said, if you ever have to move the doll, the way to do it is this. But when you handle the doll, you don't handle it with your bare hands. Ed told me, wear a pair of like heavy welding gloves. Make sure your hands were drenched in holy water first before you even put the gloves on. And envision yourself in a white light, and ask God for protection from anything evil that might be attached to Annabelle. But it's rare that we move it. We try not to move it very often. There are times though when we have to move it, like when we have to repair the case, which you're gonna have, would have to do. We would have to repair this case and move the doll. What he does, Dan Rivera, my lead investigator, he made this case. What he does is he gets stain, he gets water, he brings it to the priest, and he has the priest bless it. Wow. Then when he built this case, he stains it with the holy water and oil combination with the stain infused in it. Behind the doll, behind the felt, he has a prayer written in there, the Our Father. Mm. On the sides, if you want to catch that with the camera, he cut out crosses mm -hmm. on both sides, put a cross here, and he has two plaques, the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. We consider that a protection. Not total protection, because you never know. Yeah. That's why we don't touch it with our bare hands. That's why it's glass. So, the story of Annabelle. You ready for this? Oh, absolutely. Lorraine and Ed got a call from two nurses. They said, we have this item, and we think it's causing a lot of problems with us. Can you come over? So they went over the house, Ed and Lorraine. They visited these two girls. One of her names was Donna. She's the one who received the doll from her mother as a birthday gift. Now Donna was about 28 years old at the time, but she liked dolls. A lot of girls like dolls. I don't blame them. You know, it's nice. It's like we like model cars. Nothing's wrong with the doll that they can see. Everything's fine. They even put a little gold bracelet on the doll's wrist there, as you can see later. She would carry the doll all over the house. One day, while they're at the breakfast nook, I know it's going to sound illogical and crazy, they're sitting at the breakfast nook and the doll is next to them. Her and her, her roommate was a nurse also. All of a sudden, those two flimsy rag hands levitated onto the table like this, together, like this, and landed there. Now the girls look at each other. How about you? I'd be a little panicky, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't. They were more intrigued, like the, the other nurse says to Donna, she goes, hey, the doll must be trying to tell us something. 
And Donna says, yeah, look, look, maybe, I mean, and the other one goes back and says, well, I know a psychic. Why don't we call her in? We'll have a, we'll have like a, a seance or something and see if she, we could find out what she wants. That's what they did. Mm. That was their first mistake was giving it recognition like that. Yeah. So they did. They had a friend come in that night around the table and do a seance. Here's what the psychic says. I'm picking up the spirit of a young girl who was killed in a car accident outside your apartment complex. She's about seven years old, and her name is Annabelle. She's in your doll. That's what she says to the girls. The girls bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Now the psychic didn't know what the hell she was talking about because God does not allow a human spirit to enter inanimate objects. Like in other words, when you go home tonight, your grandmother's not in your living room chair. A demonic entity could be attached. Now they're intrigued. And they're saying, wow, there's a human spirit in our doll. And they started to really treat it with more reverence, you know, more like, like it's human. Donna had the doll on the edge of a couch in the open. And Lou, who's Donna's fiance, was sitting on, laying on the other end of the couch, sleeping. He wakes up with a start. He's sweaty. He's like heart pumping. He's holding his chest. He's like, man, I just had the worst nightmare. And Donna's like, what happened? What happened, Lou? He points at the doll, he says, I just had a dream that that doll there was crawling up my leg and it got to my neck and started to strangle me. That was his dream, a nightmare. What's he do? He grabs the doll off the couch because he's, he's angry and he's nervous. Grabs the doll, he picks it up, he throws it all across the room on the carpet. He says, that's just a raggedy ant doll, can't hurt anybody. When he said that, seven psychic wounds appeared on his chest and on his stomach. Four this way and three this way. It came through his t-shirt. Like somebody took a scalpel and they could see the blood coming through the t-shirt. Now they're freaked out. Now Donna and their girlfriend and Lou are like, wait a minute, that can't be a seven-year-old girl inside that doll. Something's wrong here. They called a high Episcopal canon in Hartford. He didn't know what to do. He said, you know, I'm not versed in this kind of stuff. He said, why don't you call the Warrens? They know all about this stuff. And Lorraine get there, they had a priest come with him and did an exorcism of the house. And the girl said, well, what are you gonna do with the doll? And we don't want that doll. Can you take it? I said, I'll bring it back to my museum. So I took it back to the museum in his car. He had like an old Chevy. As on the way home, the car's jerking, stopping, stalling. I never did that before. He had trouble controlling it, bouncing off the curbs. Finally, he stops the car. He had holy water. He always kept it in his pocket in a, in a little plastic bottle. He sprinkled holy water on her. He said the sign of the cross and said, they are Father. And he said they were able to make it home. When he did, he put it in a chair like this chair right here. Put it in a corner over here. You could just reach over and grab it, but he put a little yellow tape. It's a danger, do not touch. So that was fine for a while, right? A priest, Father Bill, he comes over in the daytime, has lunch with Ed Lorraine upstairs. After they're eating lunch and having tea, he says to Ed, hey Ed, can I see that doll that I heard so much about that put slashes on people? That's how he said it. Ed says, come on down, Father, I'll show it to you. He gets to the doll, starts to talk about the doll that's in the corner. And he starts to talk, he gets to the part with the slash marks with Lou, and the priest like, doesn't want to know. The priest goes, what? He reaches over the tape, grabs the doll, that's the guy, he grabs the doll, you know what he does? He grabs it, almost like Lou, throws it across the museum and says, God is more powerful than any devil or demon. Ed says, Father, why'd you do that? I told you not to touch anything. The priest says, I don't care, God is more powerful. Ed says, you know what, Father, you're right. God is more powerful than any devil or demon, but no human being is. No priest, you shouldn't have touched it. The priest didn't want to hear it. They go back upstairs. Ed's not too happy with the priest, by the way. They say their goodbyes. The priest gets in his brand new car and leaves. The priest never made it to his diocese that night because the car went out of control, almost head out into a tractor trailer. Destroyed the car and injured the priest. It didn't kill him, but it injured him. Two days later, the priest calls up. Crying, to, crying on the phone to Ed. He tells him about the accident. He says, you know what, Ed? He says, the last thing I can recall was looking in the rearview mirror and I saw an image of that doll. Then I, then I lost control of the car. Ed's like, the fella, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, I told you not to touch the doll. Ed used to give these little tours of the museum. He used to charge like five or $10 or $12. He'd have a group of college kids would call up. He'd say, oh, if you get 10 kids, I'll, I'll give you an hour and a half tour. And one of the kids came on a motorcycle with his girlfriend. Gets to the doll. Now, at this time, the doll's in a case. Because after all these incidents, as Ed said, I'm going to have that case built. Which was that case there. That is really? the original case. Oh. 
No way. That's where that's the original case right there, and that's where we're going to put it when we transfer the doll for repairs. Wow. Temporarily, we're going to put her back right there. That was the case that the young man ran up to. Ed's talking about the doll. He gets again to the sla I guess the slash marks like a trigger. Mm -hmm. He talks about the slash marks appearing psychic wounds. The young man breaks the crowd, breaks in the crowd, runs up to the glass, starts banging on the glass with his fingers, says, this is a bunch of bull. If that doc can put slashes on somebody, do it to me. What'd he do? He challenged. He challenged the doll. Ed's like, hey, you, you and your girlfriend, you got to get out of here. I can't have that. I just got through telling you people, don't disrespect the doll, don't challenge, get out. Kid's mocking it on the way out, laughing with his girlfriend. He never made it home. Mm. Three hours later, they found out that he was killed on that motorcycle Jesus. when he went head on into a tree. Now, how do we know what happened? The girl didn't die. She was in a hospital for many months, though. And she said, when interviewed, the last thing she recalled was laughing and joking about the doll with him before he lost control of the bike. Now, I've looked at that doll many times. I've never challenged it. I've never said, I want to see something happen. I never said, I want to see the doll move. I never said, if you can do something to me, do it. No, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. It's like going up to Mike Tyson, say, go ahead, hit me. Go ahead, you think you can hit me? You think you're tough? Why would you challenge? So over here, this is the movie, movie doll. This is the movie at all. Oh, wow. I did this not is even one see of that. the movie dolls. But that's one of the dolls right there. The Warner Brothers was super nice and allowed us to have one. Now, do you believe this is just a normal doll, or do you believe because of the intention they put into this for the movie that it also has? Well, that you never know. That's why she's in a case. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I was asking. That's exactly. one of the movies where you never know. Look. You never know. Yeah. It's right here. The Satanic Ooh. Idol of Newtown. This is a mind blower, and I'll tell you why. Something terrible happened with this. This idol and it happened in Lorraine. 1991, Ed gets a phone call from a young man about 22 years old who's a bow and arrow hunter hunting deer in the woods in Sandy Hook. And if you know Sandy Hook, you know what happened there and the tragedies. But this was way before that happened. He gets lost looking for deer. All of a sudden he stumbles on a grotto of rocks. On top of it is the idol. He never saw anything like this before. As a matter of fact, I didn't either. He starts to walk away down this pathway, scared, he says his heart's pounding, because he feels funny looking at that thing. As he's walking away, this is the crazy part right here. Out of nowhere, in the summertime, in the middle of the woods somewhere, a guy appears right next to him, all dressed in black, from head to toe, about 70, 72 years old, snow white hair combed back, short cropped snow white beard, walking step for step with this young man. As the kid's walking, this guy's walking with him without looking at him. I got so scared, I, I wanted to just take an arrow out of my quiver and go like this and stab the guy. I was so frightened of the guy. I said, well, you didn't do that, right? He goes, of course not. He goes, but I didn't muster up enough energy to say, how do I get out of this place? Mm -hmm. The man never looked over at him, stared straight ahead, never spoke, pointed off to the right like this, and then walked away. He gets to the road, he finds his car, goes home, tells his buddies. His buddies say, well, why don't you just call Ed Warren? He lives right in Monroe, the next town over. Ed meets him, they walk into the woods, they find the idol. As they're walking in, Ed, he tells Ed about this, this guy, more detail. Ed sees the idol, he immediately says, I know what that is, and I know who the guy is. A satanic worship idol, it doesn't belong here. It's Satanists that are using this. It's good that you told me about it because I'm going to take it back with me. It doesn't belong here. So he takes the idol, puts it in the back seat of the car, and comes home. Nothing happens for a day. Nothing happens for two days. Third day, Ed's out in the driveway fixing the wipers on his car. And Lorraine is about 20 feet or so back watering some flowers with a hose. She looks at Ed. She goes, Ed, after we're done, we'll go have lunch. It's like, yeah, no problem. As soon as I fix my wipers, he goes back to doing the wipers. He looks back towards Lorraine. She's no longer there. It's like seconds later. She's like 25 yards up in the backyard, lying down in a fetal position, semi-conscious. No hose, no nothing. Ed drops everything, runs to Lorraine, panicky. Said, Lorraine, what's the matter? She doesn't answer him. She's like semi-conscious. He calls the ambulance and the police. They come, they bring her to St. Vincent's Hospital in Bridgeport. She's there for three days, in and out of consciousness. I went with Judy the next morning to see her. She could hardly talk. She just about recognized her, her own daughter. And she was almost like somebody hit her with a baseball bat and she had the flu. 
Yeah. That's how she was acting, like, just out of it. Doctors did all kinds of tests, brain scans, everything else. The third day, she snaps out of it. She's perfectly fine. Doctor said, she can go home, Ed. She's fine. There's nothing wrong. We can't find anything wrong with her. She said, I want to get out of here. I'm hungry. I want to eat. And she comes home. She's fine. The next day, I come over to see Ed. I go, Ed, can we go look at the statue again? So I come in and look at the statue. Whatever happened with Lorraine? What, what did the doctor say? He said, they never told me, Tom. He goes, but they didn't need to tell me. I know what happened. He goes, that son of a bitch. And he gave me the guy's name. He goes, his name is, and he told it. He's, he's a German guy. He's a high priest in a satanic cult. And he did that to Lorraine as a warning to me. He goes, I know he did. He goes, he didn't mess with me directly because he knows I have a lot of knowledge on reverse ceremonial magic and that I could be damaging too. But he wanted to warn me because I stole his idol out of the woods. He goes, as soon as that kid told me the description of this guy, I knew who it was. Here's the crazy part. He told me his name once. It's a German name. But I'm not going to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Tell you why. So I said, "Oh, okay. Is he powerful, huh?" And I'm talking. Yeah, he's real powerful. Two months later, I said, "Hey, Ed, what's that guy's name again? That satanic priest guy?" Ed said, "I'm not going to tell you what his name is. You got to remember it, or you don't remember." I go, "Come on, Ed." Here's what he said to me. Every time I mention that goddamn guy's name, something bad happens to me or to us. I go, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah, that's how powerful the guy is. I don't even like to repeat his name." He says to me, "This is going to freak you out a little bit." I didn't learn this until about a year or so ago. The person who's responsible for the, <coughs> for the death of all those children lived on Yogananda Drive in Newtown or Sandy Hook. A young man who murdered his best friend and kidnapped his girlfriend about five or six years ago. He lived on Yogananda Drive. This high priest in a satanic cult, who well, I'm not going to tell you his name, lived on Yogananda Drive before he died. Now, what's going on? Three things like that. this guy was a high priest, had a lot of power, had told me. A lot of power. He lived on the same street as that killer and the other killer. Yeah. I mean, there's no proof to anything, but yeah. to me, it's kind of too coincidental to be anything other than something the guy was up to. That priest up. Well, but here's the dinosaur that was used in the Brookfield case and the devil made me do it case. Thank you. Thanks. How is it so far? Great, man. I, like, I can listen to you all, all night. Incredible. Like, I, yeah. I love this. I got to tell you guys the truth. So I want you to have a detailed yeah, no, post. I, there's one thing I want to ask, because um, I'm not fully really sure they're aware, but Annabelle's being moved tonight, Yeah. correct? Yeah. From the current case to the original. Yeah. What time is it now? That's going to happen tonight. What time is it now? 7.30. 10, 11 o'clock, I think, when they move it. But you guys You're are moving it from the yeah. current case to the original yeah. case? Yeah. yeah. And then it'll be in the original case when we're in here at three in the morning. What? Yeah, Wait it will. a minute. It will. The original case. The mm -hmm. real, the one it, it had it in originally. Yeah. Annabelle is not to be messed with, you know no. what I mean? Because a lot of crap has happened with that doll. I mean, in fact, we had some people here one time on a tour. So you having a good time tonight? Because we were going to see the museum, go to a graveyard, see Ed's grave. And have Lorraine come with us, and then go to dinner after that, like a whole meal, a whole, whole, whole evening. She looks at me, she says, I only came to see the doll. So I laugh, I go, you don't like care about Lorraine or me? Mm. I laugh, she goes, no, I came to see the doll. I've been thinking about that doll for two days, recognition. Mm. So I said, oh, you want to take a picture next to it? So she stood next to the case. I took her camera, I took a photo of her. She walks away, I go, well, I'll have your girlfriend take a picture too. So I hand the camera to the girlfriend, and I tell the woman, Go stand on the other side of the case. So she does. Takes a picture. No problem. Everything's fine. We leave. We go to the cemetery to see Ed's grave. While we're there, walking away from the Ed's grave, the lady's tugging on my arm. She goes, can I show you something? She goes, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah. She goes, is this normal? And I go, what? She shows me the pictures that I took and the girlfriend took. <laughs> Behind Annabelle's eyes were other eyes looking left and then looking right on the two separate pictures. In other words, like this. And then looking that way at her. At her. Behind her eye, those button eyes, were another set of eyes looking that way and looking that way. What? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And so what does that tell you? And I never had that happen before. And she said, oh, I don't want you to publish them, but I'll let you, I'll, I'll email them to you. So she did. And they were, it's real. Oh, my God. Question then. I didn't know that story until now. 
since you've told me that we'll be able to come here, I've obviously been thinking about how I get to see Annabelle. You mean I've been thinking about like, oh, I get to see it. like not not just Annabelle, but everything here, and like oh, I've been thinking what you, about it. For yeah, what you're doing is you're energizing or recognition. To the recognition, the, the more recognition you give to the doll, the more you even talk about the doll, the more recognition you give, the more energy you're giving it, mm. the more thought process you give to it. Whatever's attached to that doll, looking for a weakness in somebody. And if somebody's so bent on seeing something, it's going to oblige, right? So that's why I say you don't challenge it, you don't look at it too much. So this case here was built by Dan Rivera. He's very knowledgeable in a lot of different areas, especially Santeria. But this says, accept existence of the devil. Just like you accept the existence of God, you have to believe that there is a devil because God created the devil too. This was the creature, the dinosaur that David Glatzel had when he was a young man in the devil made me do it case. This is the one artifact we have from the, uh, from the house. This is the dinosaur that was seen crawling across the floor, floating across the carpeting, and a voice emanated from near it <clears throat> saying, you are all going to die. That was from The Conjuring 3 and from the book the Devil in Connecticut by Gerald Brittle. Good book, it tells a true story. And in fact, Arnie Johnson is gonna be a guest speaker at our Paracon that we're having uh, October 29th in the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut, the Mohegan Sun on October 29th. So if you wanna learn a lot more about this case, especially too, uh, go to warrens.net, W-A-R-R-E-N-S.net. And there's tickets for sale. We're going to have a lot of good guest speakers. One who's a pretty big name that we're going to announce pretty soon. He and his wife are coming. And of course, I'll be speaking and Dan will be speaking too. But we have UFO people, we have cryptologists, we have all kinds of, of good people coming. And we're going to have over 50 vendors. Do you have one other guest you bring in? Are you not mentioned? Are you not mentioned? Are you, are you bringing? Oh, yeah, we're going to bring a guest uh, too. <laughs> We're going to have a, a, a replication of the artifact room here. Oh, oh the whole not, thing. Not the whole thing, oh. but a lot of the important artifacts that we went over. The Annabelle doll for sure is coming. The movie Annabelle doll. The, uh, really? The worship idol. The, the uh, shadow, shadow doll. Thing. The dinosaur. The conjuring mirror. The white lady that I didn't speak about yet, but I'll get to. The white lady of Union Cemetery. Jeez. And so it's going to be fantastic. We had a really good turnout in a small Waterbury venue last year, but we figured the Mohegan Sun Casino is where it should actually be. We sold out in Waterbury, so we wanted to get a bigger venue. Yeah. And it's going to be an honor of Ed and Lorraine. It's going to be called the Warrens, Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon. Wow. And you guys are invited. <clears throat> you don't have to buy a ticket even. Oh, really? You guys don't have to buy a ticket. Well, they, they do, right? <laughs> Joey and Evan have to. Yeah, they have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else has to buy a ticket. <laughs> These guys right here. This is an actual skull used in satanic rituals. What do they do in satanic rituals? Well, they sacrifice animals and humans. So you're going to have a lot of people saying, that's not what Satanists do. You're, this guy's full of it. Who's this jerk talking about Satanists? <laughs> well, I'm the jerk that's going to tell you that real Satanists destroy animals and they destroy humans. And why do they do that? They do it to gain power in the devil's eyes. It's like they're giving up something that the devil hates. Because in, in the devil's eyes, anything that's created in God's image is a hated image. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are created in God's image. Nothing better than to kill a human being or a baby. Why a baby? Well, the baby's innocent. And the more innocent, they figure the more power they get from the devil. Uh, in fact, the main prize would be a young child. So what they do is they take members of the cult, the satanic cult, and they impregnate them for a specific reason of getting the uh, person pregnant to have the baby, then to kill the baby, and then to eat, drink the blood, and rip off the skin, and eat the skin and flesh of the baby. So are Satanists bad people? You bet your ass they're bad people. So that's going to be on display. That's an actual human skull that was given to Ed. Wow. Ed collects the Ouija boards from people who can't use them anymore or shouldn't <laughs> use them anymore. Yeah. And why shouldn't you use that? Why wouldn't you use the Ouija board? It's just a game. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That is a conduit to the other side. Mm -hmm. That's like a telephone to the other side. 
what are you doing? You're asking questions of the unknown realm. Put my hand on that planchet and say, I want to speak to a spirit. You're not saying specifically who, right? Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. spirit can come through. Or, I want to speak to my grandma, Josephine. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe something's happening. I mean, let me verify that it's her. A demonic entity can read your mind. As far as I'm concerned, from what we've learned, they can read your mind. It's not guesswork. They know what you're thinking. So when you're thinking the red bicycle, they pick it up. Yeah. Now you're convinced it's your grandmother. Now you invited them in. Oh, Graham, nice to talk to you. So you just invited in the unknown realm. And once you invite that in, what they want to do, a demonic entity, is destroy a human in some fashion, either physically or emotionally. Have you get broken up in your marriage, have fights, dysfunction, chaos, lose your job, start drinking. Remember I said they attack you on the weakest level that you have. Like a witch could say, I want something bad to happen to Tony, to Elton and nothing happens right away. It could happen in, in a few months. They pick the time and the date. Mm -hmm. It's like the devil. When you say, well, like, if I challenge Annabelle, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to happen that instant. It could happen a month later, a year later. But Ed, every time we were in here, he'd say, don't touch anything. Every time I come in here with him, and I was here in here with him hundreds of times, he would always reiterate to me, that's why I knew Ed was real and legitimate, was he never like would like, lose a moment and go, that is all BS, you know, yeah. never. Or say, yeah, don't worry about it, you can grab that, that's okay, never. Yeah. He'd be like, don't touch that, if you touch it, let me know. This is, knowing him for years, he'd say, if you touch, you know, don't stare at Annabelle. He would say stuff like that to me, knowing me so well. Hmm. He wasn't trying to impress me, he was trying to protect me. Yeah. So, and that's what I try to do when I bring people in here to show them that this stuff is real. And people, like I said before, why do you keep it? Ed told me he kept it for evidence. You're welcome to come to the Paracon if we have an extra seat, uh, we're table. Gonna, we're going to give him a table, so. Oh, really? Oh, we're yeah. going to be at the Paracon. <laughs> <laughs> October 29th. Where is it going to be? Mohegan Sun. Well, can you, Sun. One, one, uh, one condition, though. I get to be in, in a life-size replica case of Annabelle sitting in it. So I'll be in a bigger know. case. Oh, but but they can throw a ball. And you yeah, yeah, the but water. they throw a ball. And then, I, a bad idea. and then I drop I like it. You can build it, right? I like that idea. Okay. Could, I could build a case and put it in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just, I'll just sit in there. It and they can uh -huh. take their pictures. Yeah, yeah. But if you're, that's but a great if idea. But if you're, fan, if you're fans of these, these wonderful <laughs> guys, if you're fans, come and see him at the Paracon. You know, he can sign October 29th. There you go. Warrens.net, okay. right? We got to mark off our calendar. But, we do. We didn't know <laughs> we were going to be there until right now. Yeah. Yeah. These, guys are, are, these guys are very respectful. Oh. And that's what we want. That's why we let them in. And certain other people we rejected. They've asked us before these guys asked us, and we said no. It's because of their attitude. Appreciate it. These guys, when they asked us, <clears throat> they did it almost like with a reverence to the museum and to Ed and Lorraine. And that's the reason why Dan and me and Chris and Eric said, yeah, okay, we're gonna have you in, come on in. We appreciate that. They're very nice guys, they love what they do, and they believe in what they do, and that's, that's the key, believing in what you do. Appreciate it, man. Thank uh, you. So I hope you have 10 million subscribers <laughs> soon. Yeah. What's your question, Corey? Um, can I ask so. some questions outside of this building? Sure. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, sure. cool. Sure. Well, I guys want to show you one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this oh, yeah. is the haunted oh. passageway. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you the passageway. That's in the light on, Dan. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's paintings are lining the wall. If you want to just see, follow Dan. Oh, those in. are his paintings. Follow right Dan in. So this passageway. When we held our lectures, Ed and Lorraine held their lectures in the house. After the lectures, they would have their guests come through the passageway from the basement into the museum. So this leads right to the house. Oh, wow. So, uh, no way. follow me. This is incredible. No way. And actually, if you investigate in here, oh. you'll capture some good evidence, too. Oh, wow. Whoa. Did you hear that? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, on the walls here are Ed's paintings. Just want to take a look. No. This is amazing. Oh, this is incredible. Look at this casket. That's a real casket. That's a real casket? Uh, there was a man that was into this practice. He would sleep in that casket. Whoa. So that was also given to Ed. Wow. wow. That room on the other side of that door is the Halloween room. That's where Ed will hold his lectures, you know, back in the day. He'll yeah. have like 10 people come to the house. He would have them come in the basement, 
talk about the paranormal. He would show a video of Maurice. If you heard about Maurice, the, the man that was possessed in uh, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. he would show that exorcism to them in this little 13 inch TV. Jeez. Yeah. In that room over there. Oh, what that uh, must have been like. So when you're doing inve your investigation, I suggest maybe one person in this passageway. Perfect. Okay. Somebody all the way at the other end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're gonna try to do any kind of communications, you know, just be careful what you ask for because you're gonna re you're gonna get it. Okay. All right. Well, what if? I mean, I'm assuming you guys have investigated. We this investigated place many times, right? Um, we only did it one time. Only one time. Whoa. Only one time. Wow. Just didn't. and that was the last time, and we're not gonna do it again. Why? Um, because we don't want to give the items that attention. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're around it all the time. Yeah. So we don't want to be affected by yeah, these items. Of course, of course. And there's more reasons why we go to church. We have a blessing. We go to mass. Go to confession. You know, we help people. Mm. Yeah. And we have these items. We bring them out to the public where we can educate them. Yeah. That evil does exist. So as been doing it, we're continuing that legacy. Got it. All right. So, uh, how often are people doing investigations here? Is it incredibly rare? Because I mean, as far as I looked, I couldn't actually find one. Um, like paranormal investigations here, people like how often are those happening here? In this museum? Yeah. We never have anybody investigate this museum. Okay, that's that's what, when I was doing my homework right. on it. I couldn't find any. Right, right. No, you. Other than us, and I told you. Yeah. You're gonna have this museum to investigate. You're gonna be the first ones investigating this museum yeah all right we brought annabelle down to las vegas all right but we pulled it and tony pulled annabelle right out of there when zach went to her, oh. touch her mm -hmm. yeah all right so we suggest that you don't touch any items yeah, of course of course um we're watching yeah <laughs> you, know, we're, you know um ed did that when the, the guy touched the doll was mocking the doll and he said son you need to leave we won't hesitate to tell you that yeah yeah for all sure. right so just just respect the items Course. But do your thing, you know. Um, yeah, and see what you're able to capture. Wow, appreciate it. Wow. Thank, you. thank you for yeah. This having is, us. All right, yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. It's an right. honor truly it's to be here. I know you guys. Some experience. of you didn't know that you were coming here tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I had no idea. <laughs> so you can scratch that off your bucket list. Jeez. Yeah, actually is. By the way, my main channel TFIL, the bucket list, is number 666 on the list. Oh. Was to come here. All right. So just remember, you're in the. <laughs> one of the most haunted locations in the world yeah all right so a lot of these items do have attachments some demonic and some could be earthbound spirits but they all intermingle all right so you'll hear voices you can hear something growling yeah. you just don't know where it's coming from wow yeah all right you know, I don't, I don't know too much about you, but it seems like your eyes are like watering a little bit talking about it oh I get emotional about yeah. this because you know I was mentored by Lorraine huh all right, and um, she prom you know, she made me promise to keep this going yeah. with yeah. Tony. So yeah. Yeah. I take it to heart. Of course, of course. So you know, I'm not doing this for fame or anything like that. No. It's because I love this, and I want this to keep going. Wow. Yeah. This All is right. incredible. Of course. Sure. And that story Tony told you about Annabelle with the guy in the motorcycle. Yeah. Mm. I was eight years old, driving down Route 25. A guy and his girlfriend come flying by us on a motorcycle. Whoa. All right. My father says they're gonna get into an accident. As soon as we got to the end of the connector, there's the motorcycle on the side of the road. The girl's on the side of the road holding her head and her boyfriend went into the tree line and he had died. Now, I didn't know that at the time, that that was my connection to this location. You were there. I was there when it happened. So, years later, I'm working with the Warrens. Enjoy yourself. Oh, thank you. Will. Thank, thank you. you. This is intense. This is once in a lifetime. It really is once in a lifetime. Man, it's it's really like so many items. So we're like like the only people besides them that's ever investigated here. Yeah. Yeah, and we're doing basically two because we're going to do one and then we're going to come back in at three in the morning. Yeah. So. We're gonna watch them put Annabelle from here into here. Yeah. He's I did when I had my replica made. I had no idea that this one was this large. That was the one. Yeah. I had, like basically modeled it after. Yeah. Wow. That's so crazy. I'll let you walk in first and just scan it. Small. Almost the way I left it. It's almost the way I left it. Wow. So as he turned this into the museum, then he started doing all of his other work in here, his research and everything. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, he had that 
office for a long, long time. Oh wow, look at the tape recorders. Towards the end, was he still painting? Oh wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Up until the time he got sick, until the time he collapsed, up to 2001. All the old between. cameras too. Cameras yeah. used by <coughs> Warren. Remember the Conjuring 2? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so the kind of recorders he used to use. Jeez. He used these kind of recorders. He this is his painting here. He did the Witch of Glam's Castle. That's in Scotland. Glam's yeah. Castle. It had this box for many, many years that he would bring on a case with him. And in it he'd have a cross. It's a cross, not a crucifix. Crucifix would have Jesus on it. Have been called a crucifix. That's just a cross, it's called. He'd have Manual of Prayers. He had another uh, religious book here. He'd have Holy Water. And there's another book. And he also he would keep his uh, his crucifix in here that he put around his neck, a big one. Mm. And he took this on all the... And he'd take incense. He had incense in here too. High spiritual pontifical incense that was blessed by a priest. He'd have everything blessed before he went on a case. This is me and Ed in the range back in the day. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow. Oh, you're not with you. Oh, you're not with you, huh? Wow. I don't see bad, did I? No. <laughs> I looked a little like uh, Bradley Cooper, though, didn't I? Yeah. 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 A, lot, a lot like Bradley Everybody's Cooper. Everybody's going, yeah, yeah. Oh, was, wow. His father was a prize fighter, you know. Really? Yeah. And he was in the Navy in World War One. Ed was a tough guy, you know. Yeah. I mean, maybe he didn't look into some of the things, but he was brought up on the uh, bad side of Bridgeport, mm -hmm. and he had to fight his way up. He fought. And his father taught him how to box too. So, so the Amityville Horror slide presentation by Anne Lorraine. Weird. Like everything in this room is the reason why we even do what we do today. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the key, you know. That's the key is. Well, I'll tell you one more quick story if I could. Yeah, could I? Of course. It was 19 years old, I think, or going on 19, when his ship collided with an oil tanker. Everybody on the ship had to abandon the ship because the tanker blew up and there's flames all over the place. So they all had to jump ship because of the flames and the, and the ship was sinking. He saw guys going under for the last time. He said it was just terrible. That's awful. But there were 69 survivors on that ship. He was one of them. Now, none of this would be here. There'd be no Conjuring movies. No. No, no Judy, no my wife, no Lorraine happening. Nothing if he wasn't saved when he was 18 years old. Yeah. You know, when you think about that kind of stuff, it's amazing that everything's for a reason. He was a good guy, man, the best. He did a lot for Judy and me, and so did, of course, Lorraine, but Ed gave me a lot of knowledge. He used to, I used to pick his brain yeah. and ask him questions about, well, how do you know this, Ed? How do you know a devil does this? He would have all the answers. But then he said to me one time, he goes, hey, nobody has all the answers. Yeah. He goes, anybody tells you they have all the answers, they're full of it. He yeah. goes, you're not meant to have all the answers. That's the mysteries of the universe. Yeah. God meant it that way. Or else we would know all the answers. You'd know exactly what heaven's like. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, all right, guys. All the cases that he worked on, he would be listening to it over here. <laughs> That's right. I, I, absolutely. Thank um, you. This, is, this has been well, the best welcome. tour. Th welcome. Thank you so much, man. This is, this is incredible. I let you guys in because you're good guys. And to do a detailed, you know, tour and detailed walkthrough or investigation, like I said, a lot of people before you have asked, and I said no. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to ask me after this, and I'm going to say no. Obviously, I'm not trying to do anything wrong here. So when we're asking questions here, you know, by in theory, we're also opening it to anything in here to answer us. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. So here's what you do. Yeah. First, like I said, the white light around your bodies, and if you want to be safe, give it to him. He gives it to you. He envisions, and he asks for God's protection, right? That's number one. Yeah. Number two is, if you want to investigate City Annabelle doll, you would say out loud, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, allow me to photograph Annabelle without any problems. But he, you don't, you don't ask questions of these items. You don't say, tell me something, Annabelle, or move for me. You don't do that. Okay. What you do is, in the name of God, respectfully ask you, God, to protect me from any of these artifacts that I'm photographing and videoing and to ensure that nothing happens to us while we're here or after. You know, with total respect, God, we're trying to learn about the other realm. As long as you're being respectful, not challenging, you're going to be all right. Okay. And protecting yourself. I mean, do not challenge the demonic. 
um, I have somebody in here that did challenge the demonic and he was possessed and he ended up killing somebody. Jesus. Now, I want you guys to meet him and he could tell you what happens when you do that. Um, so come inside into the kitchen. I got Arnie Johnson waiting in the kitchen. Um, he's you know the Arnie one. Johnson is, right? Yeah. 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 So that's the one that made the movie, The Devil Made Me Do It. You want to have him yeah. on video? Um, you want to do a video? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll have him come out here and um, we'll how can we go in there? Yeah, yeah. Come in there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Go change whatever you need to change right now. We have nice to. Guy. He's a nice guy. He lost his wife back in April of last year, one year. Now, Arnie tried to defend Debbie's younger brother, David, the one with the creature. So I didn't know Arnie was coming tonight. And uh, Arnie challenged what was bothering David Glasso. He said, Stop bothering that. He's just a kid. Come to me. Uh, Arnie was 18 at the time. Come to me. I'm a man. And what happened? He doesn't remember what happened. Really? But he got stabbed the guy to death, Arnie, in the backyard. That's kennel. So, and he went to prison for five years. So. I didn't know about that. Dude. I did, I did not know that he was coming and... This, I mean, is breaking, this is amazing. This is breaking through the wall of what we know. This is first-hand source. Yeah. We've we talked to people who have been possessed. We've talked to people that have had blackouts in time, but we've never spoken to someone who's actually, yeah. you know, like absolutely no disrespect to who, who he is as a human, but without any doubt, he did murder someone. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to talk to him, and everyone that <laughs> says he has just amazing things to say about it, as far as I know, he was sentenced for 20 years and got off after five years for just being like a model prisoner, model inmate. So yeah. this is this is not planned and we're still gonna make sure we can do an investigation and still like walk around and there's so much more to see. Yeah. But this is absolutely, yeah, so let's just go inside and- And everybody I, around him believes that the devil made him do it. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, I mean, bro, the, after going in there, how could you not believe that? It, it, this it, yeah. might be one of the biggest nights of our entire life. It, it already is. It's, it's, I'm just going to say it right now, it already is. This is holy literally cow. once in a lifetime, bro. And the fact that we're going to be the only people to investigate here besides ever. People have come here, yes, oh to visit, but to actually come here and investigate. The only besides them, bro. I got this door. How's it going? Hey guys. How are you? Good, good. Oh, I'll grab a stool. Grab a stool? Cool. Yeah. Thank you. The kitty box. Here, can we do it? We're just sit here. Are we sitting here? Yeah. Here. You're running the shelf, huh? We're about to meet Arnie Johnson from the infamous case otherwise known as The Devil Made Me Do It, which made international headlines as it was the first time in American history where the plea of not guilty by way of demonic possession was used in court. The importance of Ed and Lorraine Warren to this case is tremendous. Arnie was dating Debbie Glatzel and her family was concurrently dealing with the demonic possession happening in their own home. Debbie's 12-year-old brother David was believed to be possessed by a demon and they desperately sought help. Ed and Lorraine Warren, as well as three other priests, attempted to perform exorcisms on the boy, during which a fatal mistake was made. With photos of Arnie Johnson during the exorcism, he is seen kneeling over David with a crucifix and helping hold him down. Attempt after attempt was made to free the young boy, but in a final attempt of desperation to remove the demon, Arnie offered for this demonic entity to leave David and to enter him instead. Seemingly, it worked. A few months later, in a quiet, ordinary town of Brookfield, Connecticut, where everything was rather pleasant, quaint, and friendly. Until that changed overnight on February 16, 1981. An argument was stirred up between Alan Bono and Arnie Johnson, with Debbie Glatzel attempting to stand between the two. According to police reports, Arnie started growling like an animal and then drew a five-inch pocket knife, stabbing Alan repeatedly. Alan died several hours later. He had suffered four or five tremendous wounds, mainly to his chest, with one that stretched from his stomach to the base of his heart. Johnson was later found two miles from the site of the killing and then held on bail. He expressed having no memory of what he had just done. This was the first unlawful killing in the history of the town, and Arnie was tried for first-degree murder, pleading insanity, stating, the devil 
made me do it. November 24th, 1981 marked the beginning of the court case for murder. Due to the involvement of not only the Warrens, but also the clergy of the Catholic Church, it captured international attention, making headlines as the courts brought the devil and God into the fold. The Warrens backed his testimony, as the courtroom was filled with controversy over speculation surrounding the case. The plea that a demon-possessed Arnie was tossed aside, as it was deemed unprovable and unable to be held true in a court of law. He was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison, but released after only five years for good behavior. And tonight, we will have the opportunity to not only meet Arnie, but to sit down and have a conversation with him about the night the devil made him do it. Pleasure. Pleasure. Corey. Hey, Corey. What was it? A Corbin. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, Dave, if you don't know it, that's fine, man. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Evan. You know, hey, Evan. Nice to meet you. John, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Why I asked you to come inside and uh, meet Art Johnson when I said, you know, when you're doing your investigation, do not challenge the demonic. So, Arnie here, as you know, is from The Devil Made Me Do It case, you know, the Brookfield murder case. Arnie challenged the the demonic, the devil, the beast. Arnie was trying to protect his family. He challenged the devil. Say, come into me, fight me, leave David alone. And I'll have Arnie explain, you know, what the consequences were. Well, when I challenged him, you know, there's a lot of moving objects, uh, I was thrown out of the door. Uh, all kinds of things used to happen ways of it trying to take my life because I was a threat at that time for David and trying to protect him. Um, there's been other case, uh, incidences where I don't recall but came under a demonic possession with which I was told by other people. Never challenge it because you, you bring something onto you that doesn't come right away, it just comes in very slowly and it's uh, very damaging. You know? There's nothing good about it. Arnie's going to tell the whole side of his story, okay. a story that's never been told before. Oh, wow. um, so when we at the Paracon, Arnie's going to be one of the speakers, right. and he'll go funny. more into detail about you know what he went through. So yeah, yeah. guys, come um, yeah. purchase your tickets to Warren Seekers of Supernatural. Go to warrens.net and uh, purchase your tickets. Come visit Arnie, and we have a multiple you know speakers coming as well. Yeah. Good yeah. speakers. Yeah, and we really appreciate this. This is oh, truly yeah. incredible experience yeah. to have. Yeah, Arnie doesn't talk to just anybody. <laughs> yeah, and you know, he's kind of a quiet, shy guy. And actually, yeah, that's what Ed used to say about him. He said Arnie's a good kid. He's a hard-working kid, and he was trying to do the right thing. And said he was trying to protect his girlfriend's brother, yeah. and he's trying to protect everybody because he felt like the man of the house, and that was. His only mistake is he didn't know any better. If he knew better, of course he wouldn't do it. But he didn't know what he was up against. So it's it had dire consequences after that. We love Arnie. I mean, he's a good I, guy. I love these guys too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great, man. I mean, I'll be honest. If I was probably in your situation, and I feel like I could do something to protect the people I care about, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, this way yeah. you know yeah. never to do it. Yeah, never yeah, no, it. exactly. Yeah. But I, right. I, I, because I, nothing good comes of it at all. Yeah. I mean, the end results, you know, there is a victim involved and it was all bad. Yeah. And if I didn't do that, the same results would have came in, but maybe it would have been a little better than where it led. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at that time, when you see something going on like this, you just try to protect. Yeah. You know, yeah. the first instinct is a anger and frustration because <coughs> you're fighting something you can't see. Mm -hmm. And the, the strength and the power is unbelievable. Knocked me out the, across yeah. the kitchen, out the door. Jeez. Yeah. It was well, it was coming slowly to him. Yeah, I was doing yeah. tree work, and this was predicted by David. He said they're going to kill you tomorrow. So I was in the tree, 80 feet up, pruning it. So you you have a lifeline. So you have a knot. The knot came untied, mm -hmm. just right in front of me, just untied, and I dropped, bouncing off the branches. But luckily, my ankle got stuck in the uh, crotch. Oh my gosh. So I was a little bruised up and everything, but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Well, when David was under oppression, he was telling us what the beast had said, and he said, We're going to kill him at work tomorrow. Wow. I think God protected him at that time. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
That's what I was. Unless the odds of getting caught in a crime, your ankle caught in a crime, and stopping from a certain death. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't meant. God didn't want me to go then. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's like when you challenge the demonic. Mm -hmm. It'll come to you. Yeah. You don't know when it's coming. It's gonna catch you at your weakest point. Yeah. Like, were you just trying to like fight it off? Like, you mentally think like I can fight this off and I can push it away or when you come under a demonic attack you don't you don't know what's happening it's just like you're there and then all of a sudden you're, you're not there yeah and you lose the whole span of time yeah it takes over your body it takes yeah. over your vessel it's right. like you're pushed out yeah. like you knew nothing about what happened right like, about the incident itself yeah, yeah. I mean the murder happened yeah Arnie didn't even know when but he woke up in jail all I know is we were leaving, we were walking down the stairs and the next thing I know, you lose that span of time and then when I came to or came back, I was totally dead exhausted, could barely move. And I was in jail being charged with murder. I said, you, you got, you're kidding me. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Like, there was no way. Yeah. So it's just a blackout. Yeah. What that must feel like. You know, just all of a sudden, you know, nothing, not knowing anything and then you're being charged with murder. It was, um... Worst Terrifying, yeah. yeah. And when you come out, you can't, you, you can barely stand or anything when you come back. You're just totally drained. When you finally came to, did you feel as though you were yourself and like the demonic possession was over, or was there something that had to happen after to kind of? Well, I wasn't myself. I was totally uh, exhausted, like I said. Like, um, but I, I was me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was times where he was in a cell, and. Other prisoners were saying, you know, this what was happening to you, and you had no recollection. You know, you didn't even know that it was happening to you. Yeah, I had a couple of other prisoners say I was floating around the cell. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, stop asking questions so that way you can share the full story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. If you know, I'll just, I'll just keep asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Asking. yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. That's why I wanted you guys to meet Arnie. This way, he could explain that to you. Yeah. yeah. Who better to explain it? Yeah, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about you from everyone that knows you. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys be careful what you're doing. Of course. You yeah, know, definitely. You know, yeah. try to capture some good evidence. You know. Yeah. But be respectful because you're dealing with a demonic. Yeah. You know, some of those items in that museum. Mm. You know, they're bad. Mm. Always protect yourself. Hey, can I add something? Yeah. If you guys are inside and you don't feel comfortable, don't hesitate to step back and get away from it. Okay. Um, and uh, we're close by, so mm -hmm. if something does happen, you, you hit something, knock something over, let us know, and yeah. you know, we'll, we'll we all got holy you. water. So yeah. I appreciate it. I'll keep it in small groups, so yeah. and you know, yeah, maybe two at a time. <laughs> Get too many people in a small location like that, things will tend to pull away from you because there's just you know, too many bodies in there. Eric, you said you'd investigated down there once before, right? Well, we all did, actually. Okay, that was about a year ago, Tony? Yeah, about a year ago. Um, and it was around 3 a.m., doing a spirit box session, and I was at the tail end of the um, the passageway, and a voice came out of the spirit box that said, Annabelle, clear as day. And I always run my boxes backwards. So what are the odds of that happening <coughs> in the occult museum where Annabelle is at 3 a.m.? Yeah. And it said Annabelle. No matter what equipment you're going to use, if it wants to communicate with you, it's going to communicate it with you. You know, if you hear the voice, sometimes it doesn't even come up, it doesn't pick up on the recorder. Um, it was just meant for you to hear it. Yeah, I'm glad, uh, to be honest, you didn't ask us to come here four years ago, because I don't think we would have been prepared. <laughs> <laughs> now we've been, you know, in six yeah, different was, countries, and yeah. Right, it's, yeah. it's good timing, you know, and you guys were able to grow as yeah, well. So, truly. Um, mm -hmm. This is just putting the icing on the cake. Yeah, and this is literally at the tail end of like 13 nights of some, some of the more surreal moments we've ever had yeah. doing this. So it's kind of, I don't know, just perfectly lined up. It, it really just got to keep raising that bar. Yeah. What's next? Yeah, I, I don't know what's, what is going to be after this, man. <laughs> I don't, there's nothing better. Yeah, I don't know. Do I retire? <laughs> is this it? Is this Seriously. Our, hopefully, you know, we're able to teach you a different way of, of investigating how to approach things. Yeah. So you can also take that knowledge and continue what you're doing and just add that to it. Any of you want to join us? I'm. 100%. We'll do something together. I would love that. Cool. I would love yeah. maybe we could start with one of you there, so that way we really definitely. Eric will go with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would love to do that honestly. To be sure and be safe and understand it, and to and to learn. Okay, so, yeah, we'll work something out. Yeah, before yeah. you just leave us in there alone at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you always bless yourself.
before you go inside. We'll bless you guys. We'll give you some um, holy water. Bless yourself. Okay. And when you before you leave, bless yourself again. Okay. All right. And this way, there's no attachments that you're going to bring with you. Okay. But you're asking questions through the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, just remember that you got to protect yourself. So do your normal investigation. But just remember that these items are not like any other items that you confronted before. So just be careful. Go home without any attachments. The demonic is very knowledgeable. How you would say, Tony? The wisdom of the ages. The wisdom of the ages. Yeah. Only God knows everything. The demonic knows a lot, so. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you all. Yep. Seriously, thank you. Cool. We'll go get some of our gear ready, and then we sure. can join you. Thank you, you so much. Our last right. investigation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you have to go to across America and just doing all this stuff. It's like the summit. This is the summit of everything, man. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are here at 4 o'clock in the morning, so like okay. I said, we're we a little bit over with all the interviews and, and whatnot, okay. so, you know, we'll cool. give you that time. Maybe we can join Eric until we need to get, you know, let you guys move in for that, and then after yeah, we can... That sounds good. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Yeah, that's okay. good. That works. Tony's going to do a bind, uh, read the binding um, prayer yeah. before okay. I move Annabelle from that case to the other case. Hold your hands up. Make the sign of the cross. Father, Son, Spirit. Cross. <laughs> Evan would like some too. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I forgot about you guys. <laughs> there you go. Make the sign of the cross. Yeah, I'll take some. <laughs> and then we'll do it again when you guys. <laughs> Yeah. We'll do it again before you guys just, you know, leave for the night, you know, okay. just to make sure you don't bring any attachments with you. Definitely. Um, wish you the best. I know your environment. You guys yeah. know it. Yeah. All right. The Warren Occult Museum is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense amount of items all held within this one space. The collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep what is held within it from escaping. All items here are considered unholy, cursed, and evil. To touch an item is to condemn oneself, to invite demons and evil spirits to attack. 9 p.m. has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum, and this lockdown continues until 6 a.m. This isn't about closing the museum for the night, but this is when all of the cursed items come to life and to their full power. The museum in which the tables are turned, visitors do not only look and study each item on display, but the items watch, study, and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong move, one disrespectful action could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. Cool show, guys. This is well, this, this is, is amazing. Truly, <clears throat> definitely probably the coolest investigation. Right. Do you like Ed's office? Mm-hmm. That was one of the coolest things. In the paintings. Yeah. Amazing. But there's a lot of stuff on top too. Did you say that Lorraine actually made that case? Well, she, he she did it, but. Oh. She had this built to keep the Annabelle doll. Ed used to call it the devil doll. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You right, buddy? Sound a little prayer. It's good. Yeah, that's the original, uh, that's the original case. Like, like I don't really like yeah. to call it a museum. This is just where they stored like their life's work, like everything they, you know, they took and everything that accumulated throughout the years. I do have something to say when we get into a group setting. Why are you, why are you, why are you? It was during the tour, I didn't want to ruin it. What do you mean ruin it? That's, 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 what, that's what we do. That's what we, what, we don't keep secrets, Evan. We share, we share with each other. This is how people get hurt, Evan, when you don't speak up and you're like, hey, yeah, uh, Evan. You're no longer Evan, you're back to Evan. It's a callback to a video that's coming out in 10 weeks. <laughs>
Famous cases, all those cases you guys have heard about, you know, all the movies, like the, the Snedeker case, you know, haunting in Connecticut. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's all Ed and Lorraine. Uh, so Evan has something to share with us that he apparently decided to withhold from us for hours Good now. Now, what did you touch? No, I didn't touch anything when we were, <laughs> when we were, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. When we were in the corner, um, talking about the white lady, sure. uh, I was standing in the corner by myself yes. and I felt like something did that. And Push so. You. No, no, squeeze, no, no, squeezed my arm. arm. Squeezed my arm. So the first thing I do is I look behind me. I'm like, okay, cool, nothing's there. I'm like, Near the, like the by the mirror, by the mirror area. By the mirror area. Okay. So at first I'm like, oh, I bumped into something. So I look, nothing was there. And then it's like, wait, there's absolutely nothing I can actually bump into. Okay. Um, but you'll see on camera, I literally startled yeah. and thank jumped. Thank you for sharing. So um, thank you for sharing hours later. I'm sorry. You, you know where you are, right? <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you surprised? I <laughs> <laughs> won the tour and just jump so, in. So uh, yeah. This is all good. Awesome. All good. Why'd you never tell us that, Evan? I didn't want to ruin the tour, and yeah. I was kind of nervous. Evan, that is not ruining it. That is enhancing Ouija boards. I know. So many. You're not supposed to look at it for too long. The most haunted and infamous doll in history. At a glance, Annabelle looks like an ordinary Raggedy Ann doll. However, it is anything but ordinary. This doll is said to be responsible for the death of a young man and for causing pain and suffering to anyone that challenges it, never holding back. The Warrens acquired the doll in 1970 from a student nurse shortly after the terrifying tale began. Purchased as a present by Angie for her daughter, Donna. The new gift was placed on her bed as would any pillow or stuffed animal, and it wasn't long after that they would begin to notice strange and unsettling occurrences happening around the doll. Donna would sleep with the doll tucked into her arms, and over time, she began to include it in more of her daily activities. As the doll became more at home, they began realizing that when no one was watching it, it would move. Unexplainable, it would disappear and reappear, sometimes with its legs crossed, arms folded, or even standing perfectly upright. Annabelle not only moved, but was capable of writing and leaving messages. After a month of noticing her moving in different rooms, pieces of paper lying around would begin to appear, despite there being no parchment paper in the home. The words would say things like, help us, or help Lou, with the writing style, as if it were a child. The possibility of it being Donna playing a trick on her mother was finally discarded, and she came home to uncover the doll covered in blood on its hands and chest. Without having any idea where it could have come from, they sought out help from someone skilled in the paranormal. They were introduced to a medium that could help understand more about Annabelle and who or what might be inhabiting the doll. Upon meeting the medium, a seance was held with the doll, and this was the beginning of many. Through the medium, they got the name Annabelle Higgins, who was the spirit of a seven-year-old girl whose body was found on the property where their apartment was. This opened the door to active communication with the doll and the girls, sending them down a path of no return. The rule with spirits and demons is, once you begin to acknowledge them, they know, and they will continue to make themselves known. Once this door is opened, it is extremely hard to close again. The medium expressed that Annabelle wanted to stay with them and be loved because she felt comfortable around them. And after hearing the story, Donna and Angie couldn't help but care and treat the doll like a child. They gave Annabelle permission to stay with them. They took care of her, brought her extra clothing and jewelry. They started to even take Annabelle on rides to enjoy the scenery. The two girls became frightened, however, and paranormal activity began to increase in intensity around them. They began to hear lots of knocking, banging, disembodied voices, whispers, and far more. As the activity increased, they took it as a sign that it was time to do another seance for Annabelle, which only increased their level of interaction and connection more and more. What took things to the next level is when the girls began to return late at night after work, and they would find the doll standing, waiting for them. It was when a fiancé of one of the girls began to state that they should burn and throw out the doll. Did violence and aggressive activity begin? After this proclamation, the fiancé had gone to sleep with the doll across the room from him, and in the room the girls were playing. They called out to Annabelle and said, come help us clean up. 
And as they said that, the fiancé woke up from a nightmare and exclaimed that he had dreamed Annabelle was strangling him. And as he said that, Marks appeared. He then threw the doll and he said, You're just a doll. You can't hurt anyone. However, he was mistaken. There were slashes that appeared on his torso, and blood seeped through his shirt. The girls and their fiancé then called Father Richard Nolan, who in turn called the Warrens to help him investigate. The Warrens, after meeting the girls, argued that God doesn't allow the spirit of a child to enter a doll. Instead, Ed Warren said it was a devil or a demon that entered the doll and was impersonating a child. They said the doll was in fact manipulated by something inhuman, and thus the girls should relinquish the doll to them. They then performed an exorcism over the house and over the people within it. After Ed Warren brought Annabelle back to his home, he had it sitting nearby one day when a priest came to visit. The priest mocked the doll and threw it just as the fiancé did. He proclaimed that God is more powerful than the devil. However, Ed noted that the priest was not a god, but a man. Unfortunately, the priest, on his way home, in a brand new car, almost got into an accident with a tractor trailer that nearly claimed his life. His car was demolished, and the priest mentioned that as the accident happened, all he could see was the doll. Another incident occurred with Annabelle before she was placed under special holy protection. A detective was visiting the Warrens to get help on a case, and noticed the doll sitting nearby. He kept saying that he couldn't take his eyes off of it. During this time, the phone suddenly rang, and Ed warned the detective to touch nothing in the room. After about 10 minutes while Ed was still on the phone, he heard sounds of the detective moving out of the room and through the passageway. When he saw the detective, he was sweating and trembling. He wouldn't speak to Ed about what had happened, but did to Lorraine. It was found out that he ended up picking up the doll. When Ed returned to the main room, he found things knocked over, and it looked like a battle had ensued. Just by touching the doll, it can change your life, because it mingles with the energy of anyone that touches it, and is said to taint it. This particular detective, after touching the doll, ended up resigning from the police force, and moved across the country to California. Annabelle is now housed in a holy box, with three crosses around it, and holy water surrounding it at all times. This box is said to keep the doll from wreaking havoc. Even with all of these warnings and protections surrounding the doll, a group of college students visited the museum, and one of the young men came to the room, up to the doll, tapped the glass, and challenged it to do its worst to him, because he didn't believe that it could. Ed Warren sent him out of the building. Nearly three hours after challenging the doll, the man was proclaimed dead through an accident. The young man was driving his motorcycle with his girlfriend on the back, laughing about the doll, and he suddenly went out of control and died instantly when he hit a tree. His girlfriend survived. However, she was hospitalized for over a year. After all of these occurrences, it was clear that protection had to be in place as well as caution to anyone that decided to visit the museum. One thing is clear. You never challenge anything that is a part of this room, especially not Annabelle. Yet tonight, Annabelle will be set free from her protective enclosure, if only for a moment, as she is transferred from her current case that is in need of repairs into the original case made by Ed Warren. This process is not to be taken lightly with extreme measures and preparations in place. A balance must be held while moving Annabelle quickly to ensure she cannot wreak any more havoc upon this earth or those within the room, yet still handling her relocation with ease and respect to not infuriate the evil within it and strengthen its ability to break free. This relocation will be the sixth time to ever happen across the last 50 years. This room is just full of so much history. Necronomicon, do not touch anything. Be like, hey, Tony, if you run out of room, just... <laughs> Here's my P.O. box. Yeah. You know, just forward them to me. Or just... Yeah. The victim accepts it. They also accept the curse that comes with it. It's made Pretty from good. graveyard clay and bones. Who touched Evan before? Here to see if anyone's with us tonight. What? I thought that was you. I thought you ran into someone. No, I didn't run into anyone. You did that? Yeah. You did too, right? Yeah. It was a dragon noise. Is there someone in the passageway?
Nothing in here is allowed to harm any of us. Huh? Sounds like a woman is singing. singing. It does. Yeah, yeah. Is there a woman here with us? Yeah? That was a yeah. Can you tell me your name, please? Is Ed or Lorraine, or Lorraine Warren here with us this evening? Wow. Even more of that It sounds thing. like a woman singing. Who is that? Who are we communicating with right now? You want to speak to any of these gentlemen that are here tonight? Spike used to kill a baby by its own mother and sacrifice the devil. Is anybody hearing something move over there? Yes. These are all items that have energy of some nature. And I wonder if all the blessings that happen just completely suppress it. It's like a, a boxer with his hand tied behind his back. Like what can he? So it makes me wonder that if anything can push through. You know, how, like, the strength it has to do that. Oh, look at that. Whoa, it doesn't even sound like anything. You don't even hear it. Ed Warren, are you with us tonight? We're here with respect. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you guys hear that? Is that a knock? It sounded no. like it said Ed. Ed Warren. Is that you? It's so wild to think about like what this room is used for. That he would actually sit in here and review all the tapes. I mean, let alone to think what's in all those boxes. Right, all the records. Oh yeah, look, it even says in a dark place, the Dublin, Connecticut. Wow. Another uh, one. Who is that? Out. 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 You want us to get out? In the name of Jesus Christ, can you tell us your name? Yeah, just move out of here. It's all cooped up in here. It's so tight in this area. It's catching a figure top left. Who's standing in front of us right now? <laughs> Huge figure, like stretching across the entire room right here. What's in front of us right now? In the name of Jesus Christ, tell me your name. It's kind of the ceiling. Oh, there's two now. There's two different figures on this wall. It has a hand on its hip and its other hand just waved. Look. I see it. Yeah, there's two. There's two right here on the wall. What are these entities that are in here? What is Chris something? Can you find Christian? Look at this. Maybe. They both like stood up. Go back up, back up. You want us to leave? Oh. Make sure you don't step on the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Okay. Literally on the Annabelle case. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you on this casing for Annabelle? Are you on top of the roof? Can you film that, Evan? Oh, wow. It's in both cases. Whoa, Evan, look at that. Hmm. The whole thing is like, the entire screen is kind of losing focus. It's waving. It's waving at you, Corbin. At me? Yes, it's literally waving. It's glitching. Is that you? No, I did not touch you. Did somebody just touch you? Yup. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you please tell us your name? Say that again. I heard a voice saying Annabelle. You did? I did. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is an entity in that case, please show yourself. It's like as if both cases have this energy in it. Looks like that one tried to get out. That, that was wild. <laughs> yeah, it literally looked like it tried to break its way out of the case. I, am, I just got freezing. I know it was warm when we walked in here. Was that another, it's, like... It sounded like, in my brain, wants me to think it said Annabelle. It sounded like... Hmm. That sounded like Annabelle to me, too. Oh. What about Annabelle? And that was kind of the first to clear female voice. You, you guys heard that? Did it sound like that to you? Yeah, I didn't want to say yeah, it. I thought I was going to be reaching saying that. Was that another, it's, like... It sounded like... Huh? What is going on with that case? I mean, we know what's going on. Yeah, I just want to see, like, I mean... Right now, there's only two different locations that have had the SLS register anything. I mean, it like won't even pick up the mannequins here. It's only picking up the energy on that wall. Man, it literally will not even pick up the mannequin. The one at the end of the hallway. No, it will not. It's not registering it. Like I can completely see it here. Like this one is not picking up shapes. It's actually picking up thermal, like energy. That's insane. I want to go back again. Do it again. What do you do? Oh. I just walked the entire hallway and it didn't register a single mannequin. And now both cases are in the frame and it's only registering the one with the actual Annabelle in it. I literally walked the entire hallway and I didn't register a single mannequin. It's only registered you and right here and nothing else. The portal's like glitching hardcore. I'm gonna walk around for a minute. Sounded like it was a voice said Annabelle when I was in Ed's office. Did you hear that? What? Something's coming? It said haunted. I heard that on the camera mic. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are any good spirits here, could you please let us know by making this device in my hand spike? There are good spirits here. Is this picking up audio? Yeah, that has to. Dude, that was read four times. That was incredible. I've, dude, I've walked the whole place. I've put this to every single mannequin. It has not registered any mannequins. It's only registered humans and right here. Hear it? Did you hear that? That sounds, I keep sounding like it says haunted. My eyes are a little watery. I'm getting, that, that, was, that was amazing. Thank you for communicating with us. Um, in the name of Jesus Christ, were you a victim from one of these tragedies that comes along with these objects? Dude, that was amazing. That was incredible. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, if there are any good spirits here, can you let me know by making this device go off in my hand? And it went red, 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 red. I know, dude. 
a good starting point. If we know there's an entity there, clearly on this, then we can bring out the other devices. We just got some crazy stuff. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any energy attached to these paintings, can you please make the device in my hand go off? In the name of Jesus Christ, is there some being inside of this coffin? That's him setting up the robot. I'd be placing that. Right there. You wanna come out? Hi guys, Tony Sparrow here, uh, your moderator for the YouTube channel for Ed and Lorraine Warren. I'm here with a bunch of guys tonight. First Dan Rivera who's going to actually do this. He's going to move the doll out of this case into that original case that Ed Warren had set up. Why we're doing it because we need to do a few repairs on this. We need to restain the, the entire case and when Dan does it he restains it with holy water and holy oil infused in the stain. And we need to do some little minor repairs to reinforce it. So we need to take the doll out of that case, put it in the original Ed Warren case. So that's what we're gonna to do tonight. Now, people ask me a lot of times, well, how do you get to do it? Why do you do it? Well, we have to do it because of the movement of the case for repairs. Ed Warren told me how to do it if I ever had to move the doll. And, uh, Dan just got recently blessed this morning by a priest, and so did I, and what we're going to do is drench Dan's hands in blessed holy water. Dan will also put on gloves because we don't want direct contact with the skin. That's the way Ed told me. Don't touch it with your bare skin. Move it as quickly as possible. Don't just linger with the thing. And don't give it a lot of recognition when you do it. So, first thing I think we should do, Dan, though, is get this open, get yeah. it ready to place the doll in there. All right. We have to go in and up with the head up there, right. okay? This, when we, I open this up, I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna grab the sign, yeah. and you're gonna grab the doll with the gloves on, but I'm gonna read a, a, a ritual first. I'm gonna read this. That's the binding the prayer. The binding ritual prayer first, before we do any of this. Elton is holding my camera. I have all the other guys here too, Jonah, I got Corbin, Corey, and uh, Evan, we're all set. Did all I right. miss anybody? Arnie. Arnie Johnson. Arnie, 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 Arnie Johnson's here. Arnie, Arnie. Spirit to spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, with the authority Jesus Christ gave me as a Christian, and by the power of his precious blood, I bind any entity not of the Lord Jesus Christ, nor in worship to the Trinity, residing in, on and around this property, or within any building on this property. I take authority over all human and non-human spirits, not of Jesus Christ, in the air, water, ground, below the ground, fire, ice, electricity, netherworld, and satanic forces in nature operating within this dwelling building and land. I claim this dwelling building and land for Jesus Christ. You as a dwelling building and land belong to and must submit to Jesus Christ. In his name, I also bind all evil spirits, including communication and interaction, operating and residing within this place, and command you immediately to depart from here. In Jesus' holy name, I claim the blood of Jesus Christ over this place, and after all spirits not in worship to the Trinity are gone. We seal all entrances with the blood of Jesus Christ and the seal of the Holy Spirit, and purify you in his precious name, all enemies and unwanted residents of Jesus Christ are forbidden to return. Heavenly Father, mark not our sins but the faith of your church and send your warrior angels to rebuke all forces of evil presently among us. 
Let them clear a path before us and link arms around this building and property to prevent all communication between the enemy and elsewhere. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name, not for our ego, reputation, or to impress any being. Rather, knowing our sinfulness, we offer this work for the glory of your name. Amen. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You will succeed because of my spirit, though you are few and weak. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom come, thy will will be done, done, on on earth as as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Dan, put both hands out. I'll take this. As you can see, we're drenching his hands in water. Dan? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, protect us from any evil, inhuman or demonic entities that may surround this or infuse in this doll. In your Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'm going to open up the case. You're going to quickly, Dan. I mean quick. Grab it, put it in. Close it up fast. Close it up good. That's good, Dan. That's good. It's one position. That's all right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dan? Let me see your hands again. Yeah, okay. So now she's transferred. One more time. Okay. Now she's transferred over. And we're going to keep her in there temporarily until we can do the noted repairs. Now behind that, just to let you guys know, behind that is the Lord's Prayer imprinted and embossed in this case. Holy oil and um, holy um, water and holy oil are infused in the stain. On both sides, the cross is engraved that Dan did. And also the St. Michael the Archangel Prayer of Protection is also there along with, there's one cross, two crosses, and a third cross here. Represents the Trinity. The Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So for Elton and for Dan and for all my team and for everybody out there watching, this is something we don't do very often, but we felt it was important to show you how we do it. Now, why we transferred it, because we're making this case available stronger and better. So when we go to the Paracon in October uh, at the Mohegan Sun Casino, October 29th, uh, it'll be ready, it'll be safe. You guys won't have to worry. We will have it blessed and all the artifacts that we're gonna bring, we're gonna have it blessed also at the Paracon. And just go to warrens.net, www.warrens.net. It'll say right in the front page, buy tickets. It'll give you more information that you want to know. You can buy tickets. And very soon also we'll be posting the VIP party where all the guest speakers are going to come the night before and you can mingle with them. Take care. Have a good night. That was intense. <laughs> Did you see the K2 go yeah. off? K2 went off. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. During the prayer. That was the K2 or the REM pod? The K2. It went off back here during the prayer. Where was that? When I was standing back here and when they first did the prayer, it went beep, beep, beep. As soon as they started saying a prayer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, went, it did three. It went one, two, three. Hmm. You know, I just built that case for a little bit extra protection for all of us. Yeah, it's nothing to be, you know, we can't play around with this thing. It's, uh, these things cost too much bad things to happen to people for us to just take it lightly, you know? So we try to take our precautions. That's the way Ed told me to do it, so that's how I do it. He told me, never touch it with your physical skin. Uh, why? He just says your aura will mingle with the aura of that inanimate object, whatever is in, within it, evil that's in it. 
So he said, drench your hands in holy water, get yourself blessed before you do it, that's important, and uh, try to remain in a state of grace before you do it. And do it quickly. That's how he used to put it to me. Do it fast. Yeah. How many so, times have you had it? I only did it about, what, half a dozen times so far? Yeah. Maybe six times we moved it. Because really? usually it stays in the stays in the travel case. Yeah. We don't mm. mess with it, you know. Yeah. Or Lorraine had built for Ed in like nineteen seventy nine when he was over in Enfield, England. Yeah, yeah. When he was over in Enfield, England No way. here's what happened, I'll tell you real quick. When he was over in Enfield, England, Lorraine had to come back because her mother had called her up and said, Hey Lorraine, your basement's all flooded. She was watching the house. She says, You gotta come home. So Lorraine comes home and said, Oh, I'm not gonna go back to England, I'll stay here. In the meantime I think I'll do something nice for Ed. I think I have a little case built for the doll. Yeah. Because the doll, like I said, was in a chair over there. Yeah. yeah. So the carpenter was here. This is the funny story. The carpenter's here building the case. Remember I talked about the wall phone? Yeah. Well, the phone rang. It was Ed from England. Uh -huh. Here's what he says to Lorraine. And Lorraine used to like to repeat things that Ed said. Mm -hmm. So he's on the phone. He says, Lorraine, I got to ask you something. What's the matter, Ed? Are you playing around with that doll? Are you doing something with that doll? Wow. And she goes, am I doing something with the doll? How'd you know, Ed? He goes, the spirits told me. <laughs> Enfield House, he goes, the spirits told me. She goes, the spirits told you? The carpenter's listened to the whole conversation. He drops his tools and says, I got to leave. I got to go. He left. He never came back to finish the case. Wow. She had to have another carpenter come in and finish the case. True story. Right. True story. I just got stuff on. My legs are shaking a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Dan gets a little nervous when he has to move the. Oh, I can understand. Okay, the I can, and I don't blame him. I can understand why. I mean, I've moved it once or twice, but I let Dan do it so I can say the prayer, too, and just yeah. watch what's happening. Did you notice that when you were saying the prayer, this device went off? Yeah. Okay, too. Yeah. Did it? When yeah. You, yeah. you know what that means, yeah. don't you? That it? means the spirits are close. Yeah. They're, 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 they know what we're doing. They don't like prayer. They don't like if they're demonic. They don't mm -hmm. like prayer. Yeah. They don't like anything holy, holy water. They don't like anything to do with God. Mm -hmm. They're anti everything to do with God. How many times did that beep? Tell them. Three. Three, three times. Really? Three. That's an insult to the Trinity. It went beep, beep, beep. That's why God allows the negative to encroach on us. But he only lets the demonic go so far, you know. Yeah. And then he takes over because if he didn't, this world wouldn't exist today. The way it, if the demonic had its way, there would be no humans left. Mm -hmm. So God deals with it in His great mercy because He created those, He created the angels that have fallen from His grace. They're still His children, mm -hmm. even though they're they're bad children. Yeah. It's like if you had a child and he was a a really bad kid, you'd still love him. Yeah. But you wouldn't allow him to go helter skelter anywhere and do whatever he wants. Of course. You try to control him, right? Mm -hmm. So God allows the devil to go only so far. That's why we're all not dead yeah. by being in here and by investigating haunted locations. That's why we're not dead. What is that? That's my GoPro turning oh, on. Your GoPro. Okay. We have to have that universal balance of positive and negative. Everything has an opposite, yep. you know? There's, a, there's, there's love and there's hate, right? There's plus and minus going off again. Jesus Christ says, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave. I see that thing going off like that. And we're, we're antagonizing them. See, that's what we're doing by talking about God so much. Mm -hmm. But it's always a good thing to talk about. Anytime you invoke God's name, you're, invo you're invoking the power yeah. that's much greater than a demonic entity. Yeah. Demons have power, but they don't have that kind of power. They have more power than a human entity, but they don't have more power than God. God is the creator. God, if he wanted to, can just get rid of the, angels, the devils. It's still going off, right? Look, it just stopped. It just stopped. Coming back, to, let's bring it back to uh, Corey. Right here. Might be you. Something Tony. might be you. Whoa. I think it's you. Whoa. Are you guys seeing that? You were the one that just read the prayer. Doesn't like me. That's going on. You off. just read the prayer and it's only going off for you. That's a lot. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave and go back to where you came from. You do not have power over me. I have power over you because I have God's power on my side.
So you can go off as much as you want, but you're not going to hurt me because God is going to protect everyone in this place, including me. So go away. See? Now you hold it. Pull it back up. Stop. See? It's, and I'm energized because of the prayer. It doesn't like me. It doesn't like, no, it doesn't like me at all. That's why you gotta be careful. Yeah. Like when I leave it, then I gotta be careful driving. Of course. Gotta ask for God's protection. Mm -hmm. Same with you guys. Don't just say, hey, that was cool, and yeah. forget about God, no. and then something happens on the way home. Of course. Yeah. I'm energized. That's, that's what it is. I think you're energized. Don't mess. Don't, don't mess with the devil. See, the devil doesn't like me. That is crazy. What? What? In the After name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave and go back to where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. God is my protector. See, he's, he's still after me. But he can't hurt me. You know, no, exactly. Yeah, it, I, think, I think it's just because, yeah, you're right, you're energized. It's See, no, he's, he's, getting, he's getting a message a little bit. Stop. In the name of God, stop. See, I'm telling you. Oh, oh, oh my You guys God. don't realize the power of, what, of the demonic. All right, so I'm going to leave now and leave yeah. you guys in here. Thank you. To continue your investigation, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. What the heck? Chris, you better hold on to that. Holy what water. was that? As soon as he started reading the prayer, it goes off. The person who read the prayer. Not even... I, I, I tried to say... Not yeah. even Annabelle itself. What? That's... That was... Okay, we'll, we'll come say goodbye right now. So, Elton, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Hey, if Thank you. Ever, Thank if you, you ever come back to California, I'll show you the car show. Yeah, I want to go on a zoo. I want to go on a zoo. Great meeting. Oh, yeah. Hope to see you again. Uh, hope to so. see you guys again, too. Well, we'll, we'll stay in contact. Yeah. What's that? But it'd be interesting to see if it follows me out of here. Come here. Yeah, exactly. Follow me out. Sometimes it's just inside the museum. Let's see. <laughs> see, it's inside the museum. There's the fuckers in there. So be careful in there, okay? Will do. Say prayers. Ask for God's protection continuously. Don't just want when you leave tonight. Yeah. Say God, thank you for allowing us to be in the presence of these things and please protect us from now on going forward and please don't allow anything to follow us back to follow it to, to attach itself to us okay in the name of the lord you know you are my savior you are my almighty creator and uh, i believe in you and i know you will protect me and just talk to him like you talk to me you know okay all right thank you tony okay we'll see you later how are you feeling yeah, I'm still shaking my legs. Yeah, come on, Dan. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, no, no. It's just like every I time I, I deal with that. Thing. Scary as hell. You, you, you're holding something evil. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> Literally, we're over here. It's just... I know, that's insane. I've never seen that happen before, that consistently, like, ever. We're, take, we're taking it to everybody. It's not happening, right? But he did the prayer. He said the prayer. He said the prayer that would take Annabelle out. Put her in. What do you think? I've never seen a K2 do that. Legs are shaking. Yeah, they are. But um, nah, that's uh. But that that was that was intense. Uh, yeah, that's, it's see, just. The thing is, we don't do that a lot. Yeah. We've done it before. Yeah. But now it's not like an everyday occurrence where we grab that doll because you never know. All right, we'll see you, bud. Have a good night. It just. I don't know, like, it shakes me up. It really does. It shakes yeah. me to my core. I know? mean, yeah. I'm assuming it shakes you to your soul. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still shocked. God, I'm shaking. How are you making out? What was that? You talking to him? No, you. Yeah, you know, how are you making out? Good. Just yeah. trying to. <laughs> you're you're not convincing me. Good. <laughs> I'm just doing like a lot of prayers. Yeah. You know, a lot of stuff like yeah, constantly just mm -hmm. talking to God and just. Mm -hmm staying safe and watched over. I do have a question for you. Yep. Is that two people with a cameraman or one person and one, one camera? One person with a cameraman. Okay. Interesting. You know, and let's break it off. Do 15 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time. Okay. You know, um, and then switch up. 
you know. Okay. We'll just do 15 minutes. You know, shifts. maybe I'll come in there, you know, with one of your, your guys or something like that. You sure. Know, and uh, see what happens. Okay. I mean, usually a lot of, you know, shit will start when I go in there. So. That night, I heard voices. Really? Yeah, there was whispers. I just like, okay. it's almost like, and maybe it was my mind playing with me because yeah. I'm very skeptical of okay. that stuff. So, yeah. but I heard it. And it sounded just like there was conversations in the background. And you were here I, by yourself? I was here point? by myself, yeah. Jeez. How do you feel? I feel fine. So do you want the bad news or the bad news? What does that mean? Well, actually, do you want the good news that's bad news that's also bad news, or do you want the good news Just that's bad everything? news? Just say everything. So Dan said, without any doubt, there should only be two people in here at a time while investigating. Okay. So that means one person with the cameraman or just GoPros. Oh. And But he said the absolute best way to do it is one person at a time, 15-minute shifts. Okay. Okay. He said after that, it starts to get too much but when there's more people in here, it's less of an interaction. That's literally what he just told us right active. now. Okay. So, okay. the good news is more activity, bad news is by yourself. Uh, or go this literally was just what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah GoPros with <laughs> me. Yeah. I might have to do the GoPros with you. <laughs> that would be best. What? Did you guys hear a thud just now? Oh, I heard, I heard walking around. Yeah, we basically have three hours to investigate and shift, and then it becomes 3 a.m. All right. Okay, let's do it. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting See you, you in October. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's wow. Pretty cool. I've never seen a K2 do that. It's pretty cool. I've never what seen a K2. What was do up that. with that? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, what the heck? And it, by the way, it stopped the second he walked out the door. Oh. So I was just playing with him in here. He said it's only in here. He said the like, it is in the museum. The second he hit the threshold, gone. Craziest part, I already said this to Evan. What? But our paranormal toolbox is in Ed's office right now. I know. When I first reached out to them in 2019, yeah. and I said, hey, we'd love the opportunity. And what's crazy is I am truly grateful that they did not say yes that day. Yeah. Because we, yeah. would, we would not have been Prepared. ready. I don't even no. think we're ready right now, but at least we're a bit more experienced. We're way more ready, ready now. Is that what yeah. Okay. Dan said no. He, he wants to uh, just two people. Just two in here. here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spend a couple minutes right now and split out tools and yeah. yep. different ways. 100% at some point, Estes method should happen in here, which means yeah. one of two of us would just GoPros. That's fine, and then go from there. Cool. So, yeah. Right. All right. Let's figure this out real quick. Just cut cameras. Shut all the lights off. You got night vision? Yes. All right, with night vision, you're gonna sit here. All right, mm -hmm. you, camera guy, nobody in the room, mm -hmm. pitch dark in here. Yep. Yep. All right, and that's how we're gonna do it. Your ears are gonna start hearing things <sighs> properly. They're gonna tune to the. You're in here, this is once in a lifetime. Let's make it worth it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're here for your protection, so if something does happen, we're right. Or right there. With hundreds of items within the museum today, and many others that have been relocated, there are endless stories of terror caused by the evil attachments now held within this room. These are just a few of the items and their dark past. One in particular appears as an innocent toy monkey. However, it is anything but that. This monkey is said to be possessed by a demon who enjoys stalking his victims before murdering them. This monkey is even shown for a moment in the original The Conjurer. Annabelle is the most well-known doll in the world. However, there is another doll in the Bournes Museum with an incredibly dark purpose and an appearance that will quite literally haunt your dreams. This doll is called the Shadow Doll, and it has the power to enter someone's dream and stop their heart while they're sleeping. Originally, the doll was owned by a couple who found it in an antique shop. However, things took a swift turn downhill when they discovered the doll was actually made of animal and human bones. Through research the Warrens conducted, they found that a black magic magician would utilize the doll by taking a picture and sending it to his victims. Whoever received the photos would be tainted and haunted. The Warrens referred to it as a diabolical curse that when this black magic magician would conduct a spell, forcing the shadow doll to enter their victims' dreams with the sole purpose to kill them.
The satanic idol is a large statue that was found in the woods of Sandy Hook, Connecticut. The Warren said this idol was used by a powerful group of Satanists for their rituals, and it was found by a young hunter. This hunter was said to have almost been killed three times after uncovering the idol in a grotto, where sacrifices were conducted. He was said to encounter a man in black robes after seeing it. He brought it to the Warrens shortly after, and then there was an incident where Lorraine was thrown 24 five feet into the air and was in a catatonic state for three days. The satanic group that used this idol are thought to be very dangerous, and this idol equally so. Just by the effect it had on the rain, it is now being kept protected in the museum, away from the rest of the world. The haunted piano in the museum was taken from a man who purchased it, but when it began playing on its own, he quickly wanted to get rid of it. Thus, the haunted piano was offered to the Warrens to keep. This piano the piano became incredibly famous, and in the 1850s, there was a carriage that would take people to Stratford, Connecticut, just to hear the piano play by itself. It often plays on its own, but stops, and someone now goes into the room. The Warrens have previously described hearing the piano play on its own, and sounds will often be heard in their bedroom, which is separated by numerous halls and rooms. However, the sound would always stop right before someone would enter, and it even makes a brief appearance in the Conjuring universe in Annabelle Comes Home. Here lies the magic mirror that was used by a man to summon and conjure spirits. Mirrors are already thought as a gateway for the dead and for spirits to better enter the world of the living. Yet mirrors can also be used by spirits, the devil, demons, and apparitions to project themselves into reality. The mirror was used for this purpose, and that man is now in a mental institution. This dinosaur, although appearing like an innocent toy, is an object with incredible power. Found in the home of the Glatzel family, known from the famous story otherwise titled as The Devil Made Me Do It. Their son David owned the dinosaur, and he was said to have become possessed by not just one demon, but 43. It was reported that David would hide his face only to raise it with a snarl. The dinosaur became animated on its own one day and even approached the Glatzel family as they sat around their kitchen table when a voice said, Beware, you are all going to die. Ever since, this dinosaur is now kept in the museum as an object with the caution to not touch it because of the possibility for possession. This guy's got the red meters and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm pulling everything out right now just so it's all like a... What was that? What was what? is if you can come see where I'm pointing real quick back there there was just like two dots of light and they both just went like that and then disappeared yeah, at the no, top there's not, back there's, there. there's nothing up there it was like and then disappeared it was it was back behind there well I, I swear I just saw that before we came and, yeah and bringing the items back into the museum and you would hear growls from up on top. Really? Growls. I'm gonna step outside real quick. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, are we ready? Or no? Yeah. They just said they're gonna step outside. Yep. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, dude. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the point. You know the rules. Tony's been in here his entire life. If ever had anything happen, Dan, he's here right now. Comes in here all the time. Mm -hmm. Hasn't had anything happen, follow the rules and you're safe. Correct. You start freaking out, you start panicking, you start giving it that fear, it feeds off of it. You're safe. Just leave the yeah. room. If you feel like, you know, something, you're going to be attacked or, you know, you get that uneasy feeling. Go outside, I'll bless you with holy water, you know, we'll say prayer. Okay. But one lady came here and she was just focused on Annabelle. Oh. And um, she didn't care about anything else. She didn't even care about meeting Lorraine or anything. She wanted to meet Annabelle. Just Annabelle. Her friend took a picture of her and weeks later she sent us a picture and you see a set of eyes within inside Annabelle's oh, eyes, right. button eyes staring at her. 
One rule for us tonight, one of you must always be recording. Yes. One of you turns off, other one has to be on at all times yep. until we leave this location. And everything that Ed and Lorraine Warren encountered or was sent to, or even Tony Sparrow was sent, is in this one room. This is the holy grail of haunted items. We have most of our tools here tonight. We have Essie's method, REM pods, cat balls, we have everything. We will be in here at 3 a.m. We will be the second ones ever to be in here at 3 a.m. And we will be doing that as close as possible to the way that Ed and Lorraine Warren would have. We have an actual VHS camera from the mid early 80s. Wow. And we have actual tape recorders. So at 3 a.m. we're gonna give this the most raw paranormal investigation that we can. But first, who's first? <laughs> I think Corey feels the most. It's heavy. Corey? Yeah. Do you wanna lead us through a group prayer prior to beginning? I, I feel completely safe. I just got a little uh, like my adrenaline rush because of what I saw up there. Absolutely. Which is okay. Like we're gonna see stuff. That's that's why we're here. That's the point. We saw Tony was in here and the K2 was absolutely going crazy and when he stepped out, mm -hmm. it stayed in here. Mm -hmm. so and we're blessed. Yeah. You know, we've been blessed multiple times. This place is blessed. We believe in God and we believe that we are protected. So we are safe. We won't leave anyone in here long enough to be dramatically affected. So I have a prayer oh. that we can say all together if you want for sure. our guardian angels to protect us. I now invite my highest and best, most loving possible guardian angel to please come in and connect with me now. Assist me in quieting my mind and elevating my vibration so that I can meet you and experience your love and guidance. I mean, I got tingly reading that, so it kind of feels like that they're here watching over. That's good. I'll go first. You want to go first? It's about midnight. Yeah. You want me in here with you or Evan? Could you be in here with me? I'll be in here with you. Okay. Are you ready for the coolest investigation we've ever done? Did you think we'd ever be in here? Whoa. You know? The animal box is like glowing. Let me see. Look at that. Oh, whoa. I mean, I know there's a light in there, but it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should we set up the tools? This is all you. I'm just your cameraman. This is for you. Everything you need is behind you. The REM pod is still there and it's not gone off the entire night. Yeah. And I'm just here. So. Do whatever you want, man. See, holding Annabelle in your hands, what was that like? You know, when I left the room, I mean, my lights were shaking. Yeah. And you realize that you're holding something evil, mm -hmm. demonic, something that could harm you. I try not to think of any of that stuff. I got the Lord's protection and I, you know, I move it. I mean, somebody's got to do it, right? I wanted to set up a camera in there early tonight. When you guys came in, I was fidgeting around, mm -hmm. trying to get this camera to work. For some reason, it was just not working. Something that just didn't want me to put a camera in there doesn't want to be recorded. Lorraine said it, it takes a toll on you. Yeah. You yeah. know, you guys go on cases when you've had that experience where yeah. it really got to you and, you know, you get to a point where you feel depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the demonic, it's, it wants you in that stage. People out there that live in haunted houses that deal with this and they don't know where to turn to. Yeah. You know, and they live with that fear. Just like the Amityville, I mean, they packed up and left. They dealt with that for 28 days. They slept in the same beds that the murders occurred in. Jeez. Got that caliper set up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come in here with only respect. I do not mean any harm or anything. I'm just trying to talk and maybe learn the story of any spirits or souls that are in this building.
There is one tool in there I do think you should use before the end of the night. Which tool is that? Thousand rods. I think I'll use it later. Okay. It's okay. Right now I just want to get a feel of this room. In the name of Jesus Christ, I asked earlier if there were any good spirits. And you made my device go off and said yes. If there are any good spirits still in here, could you please make one of our tools go off? And you were showing yourself to me as light right up there. In the name of Jesus Christ, if that was someone behind me, make that music box play again. I was up here. Mm hmm. I know. In the name of Jesus Christ, make that music box go off if you don't like that I keep mentioning Jesus Christ. Not you. Confirmation, it's not you. Let's go down the hall. Okay. This is where the K2 went off earlier when I asked for good spirits. Next to Ed's paintings. It's so dark. I can't see it all. In the name of Jesus Christ, are there any good spirits in here? Does Ed Warren still visit his home, his museum, his office? heavily feel that they're not answering my questions because I'm saying in the name of Jesus Christ. Find out who the other ones. I haven't done these in a while. Oh, sit down. I don't make a noise. I haven't used these in a while. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask a few questions. You can make these cross for yes. You can make them go outwards for no. If there is a spirit in here with me, cross these rods for yes. Can you open them back up? What was that? What, me shaking? Yeah. I don't know. I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know.
in the name of Jesus Christ. If there are more than five spirits in here with me, make these rods cross for yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are more than ten spirits in here with me, okay, you know yes and no. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot a huge number. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are more than fifty spirits in here with me. When you run out of questions, I have one. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you please make these rods point in the direction where I saw light earlier? That's, that's literally where I saw it. It was up there. Okay, you can, you can go. In the name of Jesus Christ, is there actually just one entity in here stronger than 50 spirits combined? Cross for yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are good spirits trapped in here, make these rods cross for yes. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are also mm -hmm. Okay. I just, um, I heard a tap on the glass behind me. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you make the tool to the right of me go off? I'm going to turn this on, and you can say whatever you need to say. Watch well, it be the first thing it says is devil. Rock, George. Rock and George. I've never heard it make this noise. What's it doing? He's like... Imagine it's so intelligent, it doesn't need to use the device for the words, it can use the device to actually speak. Yeah. You should put, is it still making that noise? Yeah. Put it next to the EVP. Is it right here? Yeah. Put the EVP here for a minute. It's just got better audio.
In the name of Jesus Christ, will you tell me who George is? In the name of Jesus Christ, will you please talk to me through this device that I'm holding in my hand? Tell me anything that you are trying to say. Dude, you know how this thing is just spitting out words like crazy at times? Mm -hmm. It hasn't said anything since it turned on. All it said was George. Something's crawling on me. Just, what was just crawling on me? Nothing. There's no spider webs in here. No. It's nothing Dude, visibly it feels like me. something's crawling up me. You know what you haven't said in a while. What? In the name of Jesus Christ. Will you tell me your name or why you are in here? Tomb and Vern. Show me. That's not me. Show me the obelisk. The music box is neither of us. I don't even know what that means. Vern? Vern. I wonder if there's a person named George Vern somehow connected. If George is in here, can you make one of our tools go off? Picture. Picture. Where you saw the K2 floating is by all of his paintings. Above you, on the rafter, all of his paintings are there. Is there a picture of George? House. House. Gentle. Gentle. Not a picture of a house. There's quite a few. Where you had the K2 go off earlier as well was a picture of a house. Dude. And also you... closest to the house. Bro, I swear there's something crawling on There's my nothing crawling on spider, you. Bro. I, can, I can see everything. There's nothing crawling on you. Bro, it literally keeps feeling like something's crawling on me. There's nothing there. Where is a picture of a house? Where you had a kid to go off earlier? Soldier. Here. Here. Yeah. Dude. You're, you're going towards the house it's and a, that's a house. Bro, it just said here. Read the article. The Amityville house, it looks ominous to me now, Lorraine says, because I know what it stands for, but I remember when Ed and I drove up, it looked just like any other house. Wait, wasn't his name George? Who, at Amityville? Amityville? Oh, I can't remember right now. I'm, I have too many names in my head to remember. What was that? Bro, there is something literally crawling on me. I keep feeling it. Why do I keep feeling that? Is George here? Or a soldier? Do you want me to go in this? Should I open this door? In the name of Jesus Christ. Should I open this door? Oh yeah, it is. <clears throat> it's, his name's George Lutz. Amityville. Amityville Horror House, exactly what you want to. What? I'm, wait on, let me let me confirm. I believe his name is George Lutz. Are you serious? Yeah, one sec. Yep. Yep. December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into the house. Yeah, I was right. It's George. And look exactly where it brought you to. The Amityville Horror House. Yeah, the picture of the Amityville Horror and House. And it said here. Yep. Yeah, his name is George, 100%. Everything you've lined up with has now brought you to right there. That is incredible. Now you know who you're talking to. In the name of Jesus Christ, George, are you talking to me? Dude, that's insane. It said George, house, and then here. And it was the Amityville Horror House. And the father's name was George? They were the family that lived there for about 28 days and then left. And they left everything behind. In the name of Jesus Christ, George, are you communicating with me?
Should I do this? What? Yeah, try. Real? Real. And wisdom, what would us? Wisdom? Soak. Thick, soak, real. Whoa. Hey, we're not questioning if you're real. That's for sure. You don't need to let us know that. We already know. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are not disrespecting you at all. We are only trying to be in here and learn. We mean no disrespect remember, at all. Remember what he said, demons and the devil have great wisdom. God knows it all, but they also have an abundance. Nothing on the empty case. I repeat again, in the name of Jesus Christ, we mean no disrespect at all. We are only here to learn. You should try putting it up to the fake Annabelle, the movie Annabelle. say they were supposed to get us in 20 minutes and it's definitely been more than 20 minutes should we switch out i mean how do you feel I'm kind of ready to switch out just a little break you want a break yeah just a little break okay go get corpy i'll hang out in here in case anything happens <laughs> okay i'm gonna set the ovulus on this chair okay i am legitimately gonna have to take off my shoes they are so creaky want me to hold the camera while you do yeah <laughs> once it starts happening it's gonna start going fast I was being here all along. You good? Yeah, Corey. Yeah. Can you let them know I need to change out batteries on everything? Oh my god. No one's over there. I definitely do want to be blessed later if that's okay. okay. What I'm gonna tell you is pretty wild. Okay, let's go. So we never open our museum to be investigated. Did you set that off again? Thank you. Wait, don't come in. Don't come in. Don't come in. I'm going to say the name, one of the items in here. Could you set off the device when I say which item you are? Are you the satanic altar? Or the entity attached to it. Are you the shadow doll? Or the entity attached to it. You are the shadow doll. For the record, I am in here alone. When I say the emotion you may feel, could you set the device off again? Are you angry that you are still trapped? Do you feel vengeful? Are you grateful? That you no longer can bring any harm? Are you happy to be surrounded by other entities similar to you? 
see if Corbin can find out. All right, who's coming in? Oh, well, he's talking. Yeah, so he's talking. He just said, I'm coming in. Again. Who's coming in? Never mind, hold on. What did the obelisk just say? Oh boy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot harm me. Tragic. Tragic. Do not come in right now. Yeah, it was just so tragic. Beware. And beware. I need to tell you something. I don't even want you to try and figure this out. It's okay. already told us. What is it? I went down the line and I said, set off the device when I... Do you want this? No. The entity that I believe is speaking to us is... The Shadow Doll? The Shadow Doll. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you trying to intimidate us? Attitude. 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 Oh, you're just gonna fool me? Yep. In the name of Jesus Christ, make that motion detector light up to play the music. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Make that motion detector music come on if you are the spirit doll, or if you are the shadow doll. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. I'm excited. I already did. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you are standing next to me, I want you to prove it. Use this device to put your energy into. You cannot attach yourself to me. Put your energy into. Put your energy into this device. I think it's saying otherwise. What? What do you think it's saying? I think it's challenging you, saying it can attach to you. In Abby the name of it. Jesus Christ, you cannot attach yourself to me. Tell us your purpose. Hey, hey there's stuff going on right now. I know, it's, it's me accidentally. No, 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 this. Bill and Hidden. Oh, really? What is it? Bill and Hidden. Has he just asked if we've gone in the passageway? Yeah. Just sort of hidden. Mary. Sandy. Mary Sandy? Mary Sandy. Mary Sandy. Hidden Mary Sandy. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you in this passageway? way that I asked everything was polite and wouldn't have anything attached to me you know you are the most polite person that's ever been in there <laughs> okay that's great I think every question I asked started with in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ I never yeah. once forgot that that protects you but it pisses them off we've never done this before we've been here too no you guys before. are the first other than us first ones to investigate there dude yeah. that is that is amazing that's so amazing it's that's probably crazy. the last ones to do a, this type of best kind of investigation. I'll do, yeah. do it again. Tony's let a few, uh, even Ed, I think a couple of people stay here through the night, but it's never been investigated. Never been investigated. I did the dowsing rods in there. Definitely got to be, oh, um, bless you. When <laughs> Is that bad? Um, it's almost like connecting a conduit to you. Yeah. You're holding those rods in your hand. Okay. So it's like lightning hitting that rod and it's going through your body okay all right just think of that so i would definitely do like a, you know a blessing after
Do you have any energy here in Ed's paintings? Oh, what? This is creaking. The coffin's creaking. The coffin just started creaking. Are you in the coffin? In the name of Jesus Christ, are you in this coffin? Dude, that was wild. The coffin legitimately started creaking like it was slowly opening. Dude, I, I promise you I heard that coffin creaking open. Yeah, no, I, I believe you. Oh my god, and I was pointed right at it too, which is... Hey guys. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? So, you know what the story is about that coffin, right? What's what the story? Is it? A man that truly believed he was a vampire would sleep in this coffin and he would have someone bury him. He would have somebody bury him? Yeah, and he would like come out at night. Yeah. If it was getting pushed open, do that like... He, he think... felt like he thought it was creaking open. Yeah, I Is it weird that I feel like super comfortable here? I was uh, in here alone, I just took my shoes I've off and... I've never felt scared in here. Okay. I think I'm uh... I was raised Catholic, I feel protected. Good. I know that God is more powerful than any devil or demon. And, uh, Hear it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like a... You just did it again. In the name of Jesus Christ, is there something in this coffin? Are you trying to open this coffin? Cheat. Cheat. What are you trying to cheat? Could he be talking about cheating death? This guy would be buried in a coffin, but he's not dead. Yeah. That would be literally what you're doing. You're cheating death. In the name of Jesus Christ, if anything is back here, I want you to put your energy into this device. You cannot attach yourself to me. Is there somebody here with us? Go back to the main part then. Let's go back. Scan. Watch out, you're bumping Like we're scanning the house. In the name of Jesus Christ, Tell me if there has been any manifestation that has come into this doll from the movie. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you impersonating a child in this doll? In the name of Jesus Christ, I now have a new device. This is called a thermal device. If you are here with us, I need you to stand right in front of me. Four yeah. Alright. Next person? Or are we, we... Yeah, I guess so. Let me see. I asked you this earlier, and I'm not asking again to annoy you. I just want double confirmation, or are you the shadow doll in the case? I really wanted to see you do it again. Even earlier when Corbin like tried to ask for double confirmation, it immediately was like, yes. Look at that. Look at that. And that happened earlier. The exact same thing happened earlier. When Corbin was like asking, I was like, Corbin, it, we had already told us it is the shadow doll. It went off and I bring it up again. Earlier I asked you a question and I never got an answer. I would like to understand the emotion you feel by being in here. Are you happy that you can no longer bring harm to this world or otherworldly thing. Fine. What did it say? Fine. Fine? I believe it said fine. Like it feels fine? Are you still seeking vengeance for those that trapped you here? Or again, do you just feel nothing? I can't answer a question if there is no answer. I'm gonna bring the REM pod over there. It hasn't gone off in this entire room. It's even been next to Annabelle when it transferred cases. If you know, it still works. 
But it hasn't gone off once. This has not gone off the entire time, this entire night. my attention, it knows what to do. Simple K2. If it has energy, it'll spike. Should spike on your camera, right? Yep. So. I haven't said this in a while, but I just want to remind you that in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot harm me. But I invite you to show yourself It's like finding a needle. Actually, it's the opposite. It's like finding a piece of hay in a needle stack. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Everything in my gut says that when we use the tape recorders, we'll start hearing things. So bizarre. I've gotten like extreme confirmation about the shadow doll, but I can't get any further information. Fish. <laughs> Did it say fish? It said fish. You're fishing? That's exactly what I'm doing. Fishing to find you. It's like it's like toying with me. It's saying go fish. Everything I want to say, I'm like questioning. Like, am I? Is it? Mm. Is it a challenge? I'm not trying to challenge anything. The entities that are here, I am not questioning whether or not you exist. I'm not questioning what you have done or what you can do. I'm not even asking you to demonstrate whatever powers or abilities you might have. I'm just asking for a way to communicate with you and to understand. And not only so that I may understand, but for others. I understand you want me to fish for answers, but I'm running out of bait. I only have so many different ways to communicate with you in this room right now. Oh, the Oculus just Die. Look, look how dim, can you see how dim the screen is? No, it's not even showing up. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, this thing just got completely wiped. Before you completely drain this device, are there any final messages you want to deliver through it? It says, Arrest child. Here, hold it still so I can zoom in. It's not speaking anymore, it doesn't have enough power. Yeah, I can't even see the screen anymore. You can't at all? No. It's completely fading away. Arrest and child. What? Oh, there's so many. There's so many different things in here. Unless. <laughs> Unless that's the answer right there. Oh, what, what just popped up? Whoa, that's a full sentence. What did it just say? I've never seen a full sentence on here before. Oh no, I can't read it. No, 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 what is it saying? Oh no, I can't read it. Dude, it's a full sentence on here. What does it say? Can you see it at all or no? Hold it still. You see it in the middle? Oh. It's huge. What is it? No. I saw something. For I a can't second. read it. It's it's filling up the. It fills up the entire screen. No. No. Is it gone completely? Yeah, it just died. Is there any chance you could see what it said? It, it was something. There's no way I could read it. I mean, maybe pause the screen, and um, see. But dude, I've made it. It was such a long word. It was the entire width of the screen. It was like a, a full-blown sentence as I'm trying to decide if that was the message. <laughs> That's the story of Annabelle.
they believed it was a, a child at first. And now, under arrest. Dude, that was incredible. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thing two, nearly drained. Brain's trying to process where to put this. What do you mean, what? It's not going off. No. How? It's done. Oh, that was cool. That was fast. <laughs> that was instant. <laughs> He's trying to get me to fish, but it's cutting on my lines. And I have nothing left to fish with. <laughs> okay, should we get Cory? Sure. That, that's insane that that doll just got wiped. That, oh no. What? No, my flashlight. Your flashlight's dead? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Take one of these, I guess. Alright. <sighs> Wow, this battery just dropped from half to a quarter in a second, dude. Really? All right, I don't know if we're gonna have that much time. This battery literally just went all the way down to a quarter. Okay. Are you all ready? Right. They are going on three, two, they're on. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are any spirits in here, can you tell us your name? In the name of Jesus Christ, is there anything you want to tell Elton? I heard good evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, how many good spirits are in here? That was weird. It sounded like evil, like choir music. Like, bum, bum, bum. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you tell us where we are right now? In time. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you tell Elton your name? In the name of Jesus Christ, tell us who you are trying to talk to. Is there anything you want to tell Elton? I think it just said, ah, I killed her. In the name of Jesus Christ, who are you talking about? Uh, I think it just said two things and I missed it. I couldn't figure it out. Oh my God, it just turned off. No way. Yeah, it died. Already? Yeah. Yeah. So it drained the battery. Go, dude, it's... Has this ever... Has this ever died? No, that's never. Dude, it's off. It had a half. How did that... Wait, no, it's back on. Box. It's back on? FM. It's back on. Oh, it's blinking red though. It's gonna turn off in a second. Yep, and it's off. Wow. Wow. It's completely off. I said one last thing and I just, I couldn't. Well, it was recorded, right? Yeah, dude, it. That's <laughs> nuts. It's funny because I think they even said they don't really use that many electronics in here. And maybe they <laughs> no one really can. <laughs> What's interesting to me here, everything is in it's one surround, place. Yeah, and it's surrounding you. And you like, you don't know who you're talking to. Or where it's coming from. Everything near, honestly, closest right. to the Annabelle doll has drained. They're so. getting closer to the Devil's Hour. 
So it looks like the activity is just starting to pick up right now. The less people in there, the more activity you're gonna get. Right now, we have two of your guys in there totally by themselves. You got one in the hall at the end of the hallway. He's probably shitting in his pants right now. Oh, you're already dead. <laughs> it's done. It, he ran so. out of poop a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how at 3 a.m. we wanted to do it similar to how the Warrens would have. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, a VHS camera and audio recorder. Go old school, but we're not going to have any electronic tools left <sighs> by see. 3 in the morning. So that's all we're going to be able to Where's do. Where's the VHS right now? It's in the car. So, should put it in the house. This way it stays warm. Oh, true. I mean, you want the battery to drain because it's cold. That's actually true. Let's get it out then. And all the tape recorders too? Yeah. What do you want to ask, Corey? I think you should ask it if it wants to play the flashlight game. My flashlight just turned on. In the name of Jesus Christ, if Annabelle is controlling that music box, turn it on right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, have any of the spirits here killed somebody? Music box going off like crazy. Flashlight just turned off. Corey. Yeah. Come over here. You know I don't like talk about this type of stuff, but I just saw like a finger coming in from over here. The side of the door? This side, like something, something over here. Watch it. You just saw a finger? I just saw like a shadow. Dude, both times that you just talked about it, the music box went off. Yeah. You know the most messed up part about this? Huh? Is that we cannot get out through your way. <laughs> yes. But we are protected by God. We are protected by God. And His light. feeling you down to walk outside yeah let's walk outside i'll explain outside why okay okay it's did you guys run him uh he no i just kind of like it, it wasn't like a run out of there because it was it was freaky it was more of like uh i wanted to get out of there because i kind of felt like they were like enjoying all the questions that they were getting asked and they were kind of getting a lot of attention. I know what you mean, you know what I mean? You did the right thing. You get in over your head, you don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to give get, it too much attention. over your head. I couldn't not look at Annabelle. I had to look at Annabelle the whole time. I was not going to look this way and leave my back towards, you know. I don't know what it was, but I swear I saw some fingers like this. It was like a black shadowy figure. Well, it'll yeah. definitely mess with your head. Oh, so. yeah. And oh, then yeah. it getting close to three o'clock. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I just looked at that. From out here, I saw the the cat. Uh, the fall. cat was going off? Yeah, while, while you guys were in the hallway. Really? No. Did you guys see that? No, no, I didn't see it at all. It was going off in the window. The cat ball went off? I thought maybe you guys saw I didn't that. see anything. No. Right before you came out, like, what, two minutes? Yeah. A couple Jeez. minutes? Jeez. I was coming to get you. Is it warm? I was coming to get you. Is it warm you in here? You guys left early. Yeah. yeah. Why'd you leave early? The music box has almost not stopped the entire time. So you leave? But they said earlier, literally, like, you don't want to give it too much attention. That's what gets it attached okay. to you. All right. Corey felt, it felt like it was time to go. It's time it to go. It wasn't a, I ran out there because I was scared. It's, I felt like it's enjoying too much. It's us giving it this much attention. You felt it wanted you to leave. Feeding off of okay. us. It's feeding off of no, the I felt it yeah. didn't want us to leave. You know what Crazy. we talked about outside? No. The activity has literally incrementally picked up as we're approaching 3 a.m. I know. It started with really not that much. I know. And it just kept going and going. They are feeding off of us. They are loving this attention we're giving them because they don't get attention like this often. Right. right. So this well, is where you gotta be careful with this. Make sure that you're grounded, you're protected. You're yeah. surrounding yourself with the white light. You're holding around with holy water? 
Yeah. That's probably a good idea. What's that? For him to do like a whole new round of holy water? Yeah, we could give him holy water. Tell him what that is, Wade. It, this is holy oil blessed. It was blessed on the, from the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Okay. So this is this bottle has been placed on the stone that Jesus was crucified on. Oh, wow. So if you're feeling weak or threatened, Put it in that's, your back pocket. That, yeah. that in your aura will power, give you power and uh, strength and also confidence to know that you're protected. It's starting to get really active right now. Yeah, again, if you need to step out in the middle of it, like, step out. Yeah, I mean, don't be a brave, you know, the hero and, and if my you job. feel threatened. Yeah, it's his job. <laughs> we'll drag, actually, we'll tie rope to his leg and yeah. just drag him out. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, he really left this on all the way back here. And the flashlight's still going. I mean, we do our best. I was still like Wade was explaining to you, it won't come up to this level of the house. But there's sometimes where we could hear Wade could hear <laughs> coughing coming from the cellar, mm -hmm. like a wet cough. Well, I mean, I actually well, heard it earlier. I'll, I'll hear, I'll, when I play like uh, Christian music, I'll hear growling after I turn it off. And it's when I'm sitting in the living room holding the cats and it's dead quiet, no pun intended, and then you'll hear just below the staircase <laughs> saying don't do that. It's like a low growl. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it like doesn't, it makes them un very uncomfortable. Yes. Alright, we gotta hit it. Alright. Let's do it. Alright, roll it. You got the score. You're gonna be fine. You got Elton in there. <sighs> You're all good. Yeah. So how's this compared to all the other locations that you investigated? I think this is the most evil. And that's what Ed and Lorraine, why they did this. Yeah. You know, that's why they brought people in to show that evil exists and and all that stuff. And, and, it, cha and it changes yourself. your perspective how to approach things. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it really does. The jacket that's on the chair in the office yeah. that Tony tell you that's Ed's jacket. Yeah, I can tell. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's yeah, Ed's so jacket. Yeah. That's the same jacket he mm -hmm. actually wore to the Amityville case. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. I, I, I need to realize like this, you know, it was their home mm -hmm. and like this was their literally like work office. Right. And so if they could be in there for all those years and be okay. Mm -hmm. Because they both lived, you know, a fairly long life. Yeah. Yeah. We're straight up going no tools at all, right? We're just going voice recorder and VHS. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then I will through the room. Oh. First time. Oh. No. No, I'm recording. I'm recording. First time it went off. Where the f right there. By your head. No way you shut that off. Shit. Walk by it again. I mean, I know. Just walk by it again. No. Oh my god, it went off. That scared the piss Dude, it's, what time is it? 2.45, first time first it went time. off. Oh my God, this is why we always have a camera on. Oh. I didn't catch it, but I heard it, and that's what matters. God. Let's go. Oh my God, who just opened the door? Me. First time, oh my God, dude. Dude. Is this the first time it's going No, off? it went off once for Evan like five minutes ago. Holy, dude, as of, uh, what time is it now? It's almost 2 50. 3. 2.50. Dude, it went off for the very first time when Evan got near it, and now it's going off like crazy. Did you ask anything? No. no. It, j it literally scared the shit. That, that luckily got it. That very luckily got it. As you open the door, it goes off. Like, welcome back, Corey. This is done. I have no power in this at all, so we're out a whole IR light now as well. Got it, mine. Music box. Jesus. And that's a brand new position. I just moved it intentionally to see if it would go off again. Let's go. Let's go. Are 
Eight minutes left. Make that rim pod go off again if you went off because I was walking inside. Precisely at three, I'll tell you one. Three AM go. All of them are on. Before I let you ask the first question. Three AM. It is still three AM on the dot. Three AM. Does mine have flash? Crank the wheel. Pull, yep. crank the wheel to the right, and then press the button. Flip the lever on the front. 3 a.m. on the dot. It is still. Now it's 3.01. Ask the first question. We got an hour. Remarkable that it's been in here the whole night. Annabelle was transferred, and it never went off. At 2.50, it went off for the very first time. The next one was when you walked in, and at 3 a.m. We have the audio recorders too, so they, they'll be able to hear things we've never been able to hear before. That is remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. I'm hoping you can speak to us and we'll be able to hear your voice later. But I want to know from earlier if you are the shadow doll. Maybe now you'll answer my question. Are you angry that you were captured here? Are you sad that you were captured here? Now are you sad because you can no longer do the devil's work? Or are you sad because you no longer have your own free will? Or are you sad that you are surrounded by forces and entities that may be as powerful, if not more, powerful than you? We got one step further on the answer than last time. That was that at was 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. I want to take a picture of the shadow doll. I wonder if it'll get my reflection. Do you want an angle? In the name of Jesus Christ, are there spirits trapped in this room? In the name of Jesus Christ, are their spirits angry because they are trapped in this building? The music box hasn't gone off. It's still on, yeah? Yeah, it should be. It's still on. Okay. Yep. Cat ball. Cat ball's going off. Where? Right here, on top of this chest. That's the first time I've seen a cat ball go off. Same. What is it? What? What? <coughs> what? What's wrong? <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I don't know what it is with this tarot cards all over it, but I don't know what the box is. We're not going to open it. No. 
Ooh, I'm getting a headache. <clears throat> I, have, I have a pretty bad stomachache. For whatever entities are in here, whether good, confused, evil, or demonic, do you have a message you want to share with the world? Speak now. In the name of Jesus Christ, is George here? Or is the energy here from the Amityville Horror House? In the name of Jesus Christ, are there any good spirits trapped in objects inside this building? I think that there is good here. I, th I do. I think there are spirits here that are you know, stuck to other objects that do mean good. I do believe that there is bad as well, but I do believe that there are some good. You're not supposed to challenge the demonic. Mm -hmm. but if you believe they're good, challenge them to prove it. If there are good spirits here, demand they show it. You can. If you believe they're here, prove it. I don't. I don't think there's anything good here. I think there might be items in here that were created with good intentions mm. and went badly. Like good energy. But I think people might have had good intentions and misused it and it turned bad, but I don't. So ask. If you're right, you got the answer. You for can. the good spirits to show themselves? Yeah. Because the way you worded it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask. <clears throat> okay. Corey believes that there are good spirits, good souls, good people, or angels. Could you please show us if you are? We are not the people to help you, but there are people that care deeply about this place that could. Please give us some sort of a sign. In the name of Jesus Christ, if the spirit that was playing with this box is still in here, can you please make it go off again? Did you close the door? No, no, no. Did you close the door to the hallway? The door closed. Did you leave it open? Yes. You had it open? Yes. Huh. We'll hear it too, if anything actually closed it. Yeah, we will. I'm gonna walk down for a picture. Okay. That was in? Are you okay? My eyes are doing really weird things. Like what? 
Like what? Are you okay? Yeah. Like your eyes are doing what? I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing... I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing like weird shapes. You want to step outside? No, that's okay. It's like when you stare at the sun and you look away, but like I haven't... I'm in a dark room. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that. What happened? What I, happened? I literally felt like I was, you know, not to... I felt like I was going to shit myself. Like, immediately felt like I was... In there? Mm-hmm. Well, as you walked in there, there was more crawling on the roof. You okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are not allowed to attach to me or Elson. You good? Yep. Yep. I'm fine. It's not a challenge. I'm just letting you know. Can't do anything to me. Can't attach to me. Can't come home with me. You cannot hurt me. You are contained and you are staying in this room. That is the first time I've ever had a reprimand of spirit. Are you okay? Yeah. It's 317. I thought we were like 330 at least. What do you wanna try you to get hurt? answers? Yeah, it just it literally just It's not like a pain, it feels like I'm gonna lose control of my valves. Is the toolbox in here? It's in the it's in Ed's office. I might grab another cat ball. Grab something out, sure. And I'm gonna actually make sure this is still on. For all I know the battery's been drained. Still on. That just went off by itself. Your turn. I just, I don't know why, but I think we're gonna get what's here. I think we know there's something here. There's no doubt about that there's something here. Yeah, 100%. You know what we haven't asked yet? What? Did you hear that cough? Yeah. You know they said it's a common thing they hear. A cough? Yes. I didn't know that. They say that they always hear a cough. I'm gonna turn off the music box. Just, there's no way to avoid it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to let you know we are not challenging you. We are not disrespecting you. We are only here to ask questions and learn about you. If there is a spirit or entity that is trying to communicate with us, can you please make one of our devices go off? I'll ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, if the energy of George is here, please give us a sign. The entity in this room that wants to speak with us tonight, Annabelle. What? The tape recorder just stopped. No, it didn't. What was that? Why did it do that? Why did it just do that? None of the others did it. They would have all done it at the same time if it was like a tape issue. Right? Yeah, they would have. They, yes. they all were basically recorded at the same time. They all would have yes. done that at the exact same mark. 100%. It's still moving, right? Yeah, it's still recording, but what was that? It's like it tried to jam it. 
I've never been so excited to listen back to audio. It's not even halfway through. I thought I hit something when I was coming down. Something was just like, bloop. As I started to go like this, something literally just pokes me. And I was like, oh, did I just hit this? And I'm nowhere near it. Okay. The first question. stopped. No. It stopped. It completely stopped recording. Completely stopped recording. Done. Can I hit record again? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that again. We have all new tapes now. So we'll make sure to hear anything you might have to say. For any of the entities in here, that harmed someone. Could you tell us why? Dude, feel my hands. Yeah? I'm very ice cold. Your hands are warm as hell. Mm -hmm. My hands are freezing. Cause I'm not scared to be in here. I'm not, I don't know. You know what? Nothing. See, you're more afraid to be in here. No. Knowing that you're trapped in here, rightfully so, does this upset you? Will you make one of our tools go off if it is true that 3 a.m is the devil's hour. You know that that's like a impossible thing for them to do, right? What are you... You're asking something known to be demonic to do something in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen. Like, well, if, if they're listening to you, which they are, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, why would they ever... But that's the only way I can ask a question. I know, though. I know what you're saying. That's all. I just, you know, that's why I've stopped saying it. Because I know before I leave, I'll say what I need to say to make sure I'm safe. But for the time in here, I want the best chance to get an answer. You've asked crazy stuff before at places. So I was going to say, if you want, the I can The rules are different here, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can't ask the questions I normally would. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Trust so me, cool. I, I, I'd like to, but after meeting who we met today, yeah. I don't think it's really... One, safe. it's worth the risk, and two, I don't... I believe all of them. Me too. We go to other places and I'm unsure, but I mean, these are people we spent the entire day with and I believe every word they told me. Yeah. I mean, do you think about how many late nights he had in here? There's probably nights he was in here till 5, 6 in the morning. It's...
Jackson. Hmm. We know that Ed is no longer on this earth physically. But if he were, do you have a message for him? Or a message for Lorraine? I don't know why, but I feel like, like right here, there's almost like a sense of gratitude for what's in there. You, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a kid who's acting out. Mm -hmm. And at first, when you confine him, restrict him, punish him, mm -hmm. he's spiteful, vengeful, hateful, everything, aggressive. But as time passes and when he gets to look back and reflect, he respects it. He's like, thank you. So, yeah. And I don't know why, but like everything inside of me feels as though some of the spirits in there almost feel that way now. Mm. Like they almost feel grateful that like they understand why yeah I mean dude if that's a gut feeling you're getting that could be true you know I never once even had that theory I've never thought that but that is very you possibly know what true I, mean? like, I look back at all the times I was grounded for all these things and uh, in those times I was just mm -hmm. full of just hate and anger Yeah. and now looking back I'm like those are Valuable lesson. You know, I don't yeah. know if that transcends. I could see. I could, I could, I could totally see. That's why I, that's why I low-key keep asking, you know. And when I ask questions, yeah. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm curious if, you know, if any of them out there, you know, do be, want help from Jesus Christ. That might be the next question to ask out there. If there were, anything here was evil or demonic that has now changed? I think that's a great question. I don't know why coming in here made me think that way. I like sat in this chair. Maybe that was a theory Ed had. And his energy is still in here. I mean, dude, there's so much of his stuff in here. There's no doubt his energy is here. That was I, so weird. I just sat here and I just like, I felt like a, almost like at peace, like, I mean, that's his jacket you're leaning against. That's his actual chair. Yeah, she really thought, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Maybe that gut feeling is actually something telling you that. You know? <clears throat> what the fuck? Something just touched my butt. Something literally just pushed on my butt. <laughs> I ain't even playing. Why are you saying it like that? Something just pushed on my butt. Because I don't know how else to say it, bro. I'm walking out and I literally just felt that on my cheek. Whatever feeling I had in that room does not apply over there. The second I walked within a few feet of it, that it started hurting again. Really? Was it just your stomach? Yeah. I'm going to do one last thing for the final few minutes. What's that? I'll mm. take mine out. And that's supposed to... It's supposed to be... Oh, wait, you're going to... I'm going to take mine out. Oh, you're not... No, like, I'll, I don't want it. Last few minutes. Okay. Last mile of a marathon, push through. Yeah. I just wonder, I forgot we have that. It's extra protection. Do you want me to sit in Ed's office? We can have a minute out here without it, I guess. Because I'm, I'm going to keep mine on. Sure. I would like to keep wearing mine. Bro, I keep hearing something crawling back there. It's actually real, like, you're not wearing headphones? No. Your actual real right ear. Wow. You okay? Yeah. Can you hear now? It's like half there. I was hearing crawling back there. I was wondering why you called Jen over. What was that? You okay? Yeah, I, just, I popped it. That was really weird. That's a first I've never heard that before. You okay though? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. The 
measure of ensuring that we are safe when we leave here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's all I remember. But fittingly, what's after that? Lead us not into temptation. Oh, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And good night. What? Whoa! What? Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Are you. I just got a stabbing what? pain in my leg. Oh my god! Like it feels Sweet. like it. The battery just died on the GoPro when we said goodnight. The battery died on the light on the and on the last really picture said as I said goodnight. And it died. And those batteries last for hours. If that wasn't the ultimate sign of I've been here with you the whole time, leave. Yeah, we should. Let's go. Yeah. You say goodnight. <laughs> okay. You can go. Oh. Head out, okay. Oh my god. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must stay here and you do not have permission to follow us. Thank you. Yo. That was absolutely, I literally go on my last picture and good night. Dude, that was like, that was like a movie. I just heard Evan go, oh, oh, oh. I, <laughs> that was the craziest what just happened? ending possible. That was absolutely absurd. What just happened? We were like, we said our father before leaving to protect us. Yeah. And then the last thing I do is I had one picture left. Uh-huh. And Evan actually finished our father for me because I couldn't remember the last couple lines. Okay. And my last picture, I literally snap it and go, good night. And on the word night, his entire light turns off. Just immediately. Yeah. Completely turns off. And Evan has two hands on and it just, di literally, good night off. That was one of the, what? That was one of the coolest things I've, uh, dude. That was, I don't know who's behind. Is that Dan or whoever? Dude, that right here. Dude, that was one of the coolest things we've ever. Thank you guys again. Seriously, thank you. This, it. Is, no, this is this is incredible. incredible. We still we got some stuff it. in there. We'll go grab it out. Most yeah, of it's yeah. backed up. No, you guys are good. You guys got uh, you guys got great personalities and uh, appreciate. It. Thanks. You, know, you, you respect it. What we what we requested you guys to do, you yeah, know, right. and then some. You know, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, this is your home. Yeah, you know true. I, mean? I literally it's your guys house. asked you if I could take my shoes off. Like, <laughs> 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 you know? And he said no. I was like, all right. <laughs> I guess I'll have squeaky shoes. I, I really need to stop ghost hunting with squeaky shoes. Oh, okay. This is yeah. an so awful sneakers. decision. Huh? Sneakers. Yeah, definitely. Before we went in there, so this is after. With sure. water, bless yourself. With water, bless yourself. All right, Lord Jesus Christ, please protect us. May we not bring any attachments with us. Guide us on our trips home. Safety. Everybody is taken care of. And we all accept Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Amen. 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 Alright guys, so thanks for coming out again. Thank uh, you so thank much. You. Um, I'm wow. glad you guys were able to experience this. Yeah. And uh, you guys own it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity that you guys, we, we've actually given you guys a once in a lifetime opportunity and we're never gonna, we're not gonna do this again. We're not gonna do a full investigation of the museum. So, you guys have it. You know, you have the footage. 
We're gonna have this for the rest of our All lives, right. just remembering this. Yeah, and, and you guys Jeez. will now be a part of our family. Yeah. And um, and that says a lot. And mm -hmm. I mean, you guys earned our trust. Thank and like you. I said, you respected for what we said, how to go about things, and uh, you didn't question it. You know, so really appreciate that. So anybody that comes here, you know, we made we're friends. Yeah. So you're part of the family. All right. So we might call out to you guys for help, maybe something. You know, <laughs> uh, you know to help us out on something. Yeah, like, hey, we got a doll that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a. You, you never know, and vice versa. Yeah, you guys yeah. need help, you know. Just give us a call. Yeah, there's okay. a chance that we can now uh, we might call you guys for help. Yeah, cool. Thanks, thank thanks you. for Seriously. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, nice. you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for Safe traveling. Safe traveling. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, I appreciate all the work that you put in. This was the culmination of my career, so uh, I no longer need your services. Yeah, one of the EVPs in there said, <laughs> don't, uh, should just be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not here. Wait, you have <laughs> since you locked the museum. Right. Oh, there's gotta be here then. That was so awkward. Your blank face, just like, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Yeah. We all did right. it. See you guys. When's the next time we're gonna use this camera? Why not in the next? This is like a special, this is like popping open, a, you know what I mean? What? It's a special occasion. It is. Like I can't believe we did it. Hey, expensive be, champagne. It would be kind of cool is if we, uh, when we go back to Alcatraz, bring Ooh, this out for a minute. inside of Alcatraz. That's when the next time we'll bring this out, instead of Alcatraz. Down. <laughs>